Um, Detective Bell, before we start this morning, um, were you, in the last two sections of the video, we observed you and Detective Lee showing Mr. Smith a variety of photographs. Were those photographs, were the ones involving Kathleen Joe Henry, did those photographs come from the SD card? Yes. Okay. Were the other photographs given to you from cyber crimes um, off of his cell phone? That's correct. Okay. And I want to show you one in particular. Yes. This states exhibit 40. It was previously admitted by Angela Worthy. Um, there was a photograph where the defendant identified um, his stomach as and his genitalia. Is that the photograph that you showed him in that portion? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, but then let's go ahead and resume. For folks that were following along, we are at 1922 hours, um, non-military time. What time is that, Detective Bell? I'm sorry, what time did you say? 1922. 7.22. Okay. And we are on page 214, line 22 of the transcript. <laughs> She does have DVD drugs. Yeah, I mean, I have one, so we'll figure something out. Yeah, one, so. Okay. Do, you need, do we need to show you that? I don't want to see anything like it. It's not me. The, 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 the voice, you read my voice days. Already enough to give me not me, you know? Um, I believe you that I've done something. Else. Are you afraid of what you're going to see on there? Yeah, I don't, I don't want to see. You know what's on there. Well, if, if it's anything to do with these photographs, it's all of those. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's those. Yeah. And then some, and then 16 or 18 videos are. Basically, what this is, does, looking at this, Makes you really, you know, you know what happened, and it's just going to make it 100 percent that much more real that it happened, and uh, and it's going to be that much harder for you to say, I don't remember, I don't recall that, that can't be me. It's, you're not going to be able to say that. You're already almost to that point where you can't say that anyway because you you already see what we have, and so I got it. and, and you, you, we talked about it a minute ago about. There's there's the you that goes to, to you know, to Virginia with your wife and you go to work and you live a normal life. And then there's that other person that you just kind of can't quite, you know, get could just come out and talk about that other person, the other things that the other person does, the girls, the having sex with girls on the grass and homeless girls and going in tents with homeless girls. I mean, that that's that other person and you can't you you're just trying to you just trying to act like that's not happening, that that person didn't happen. Do I need to tinks? Well, I mean, out in the, I mean, you were at a homeless camp with this girl in the grass there. So, I mean, uh, I don't know. The, 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 the part that um, man, that uh, it, it, it wasn't a homeless camp, but it's we would party with in the, in the daytime, people would party, but I was partying here. You're from a party, sir. Bush, so basically, you know. <laughs> I, yeah, I'd, I'd like to maybe see this, but I've got enough to believe. I believe you. I, I, I believe you. I just cannot understand why I would do something like this. And then that's and, and, and that's what your question is. Why would I yeah, do that? Yeah. We know you did it. You know you did it. We're just looking for, and there and there may not be a oh, there may not be a why that that you think is reasonable, right? Yeah. But there is a why as to what happened. We don't. We might not know why it happened, but you know what happened. We're gonna. You're gonna see what happened. You're gonna see what you did. Mm. I just know why, why would I? Why would I get angry like that? Because you're not angry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you said no. You're, you're very calculated. You're why, you're narrating it. Why would I say I've got an audience? I'm not saying that you have an audience, but you're clearly talking to. Yeah, you're, you're not just talking to her. You're talking, you're narrating this. 
And it's because of whatever fantasy it is that you have in your mind, whether you're going to share this with other people or you intended on it, I don't know, but you certainly intended on viewing it yourself. And you're clearly exerting power over this person. Jesus, God. What do you think up until that point? That girl's dying. Oh. That was not going to be very hard to figure. Like I said, this is a when this gets on a fifty-five inch TV. Yeah, there's no voice in this one. She's alive. Yeah, yeah. That's my voice. Bradley Phillips does, or whoever that is. That is. <laughs> no, but he's a naughty person. But he's a naughty, a naughty person. But he's, he's just tells dirty really jokes and he's racist. He, you know, he can make racist jokes and stuff. Like that. It's clear to say in your life, in your normal life, this is not something that you do on a regular basis. No, no. This is not something your wife role plays with you. <laughs> no. this, is, this isn't even something that, to this, this extent. Did you go this far with Alicia? No. No, no, in, in Alicia, I would... She, she would say, put my, my, my son in my and So my, how and why? And I would block Alicia. So how, so, how does, so how does the good person in you, that other person who's not the good person, who's out picking up prostitutes, get to the point where this is what this person's doing? And you may not have an answer as to why you did that. I don't know why I would do something like this. I, I do not know. I do not know. Because apparently you've been fantasizing about killing somebody. You've thought about killing people. You've talked about killing people with other people on how, how it would be. That's just like... That was just boasting and whatever. But, but here you are doing yeah, it. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Talking and doing are two different things. I'm doing something, yeah. You're talking that's, and doing. That's me. I'm, yeah, I'm, that, that's my foot that. Mm -hmm. that. That is me. I'm not denying that. Uh, and, and you're not dying, denying that because you know that. You're seeing this and you know that's you. Mm -hmm. but, you but the question is, I, I, I don't remember doing this. I mean, I don't know why I would do this. The good, the good side of you doesn't know why you do that. And of course, these question, but... But the side of you that goes out and has sex with homeless girls in the grass, obviously something triggered that guy. And he might not normally that you might not normally done that this far. But like I said, something something about her, she did something, whether maybe maybe it made you mad that she was out, you know, being a prostitute, being out being dirty, maybe causing spread of disease. You are talking about being very aware of diseases and not wanting to get but and you can talk about in these videos about her spreading her hepatitis and stuff like that. Obviously, that makes you angry. That makes you upset that, that women are out doing that type of thing. And I get it. That is kind of frustrating. That is irritating that people would go out and, and maybe put a, a, a normal Joe Blow guy going around trying to get a, a quickie, put him in that kind of danger of catching something like that. I can get that that would make you angry. Mm -hmm. But I think something she did something that night, something either she didn't want to have sex with you she didn't want to do whatever you wanted to do, which maybe maybe it was what you used to do with Alicia. Maybe that's what you wanted to do, and she wasn't down with that. Something set you off, and, that, and it had to be something like that. 
She wasn't into whatever you were wanting to do that night. You went ahead and you did it anyway. Does that sound right? Is that what happened that night? It makes sense. It might be, but I, 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 I don't want to lie and say yes. But you know, you know what you know what has happened, and you know what was going through your head that night. No, you weren't, too, you weren't too drunk. You've never people. I've talked to hundreds of people that have been blacked out, and no one can describe what blackout means to them. You said you've never been blacked out other than one time several years. You know, I don't remember. I don't remember any blackouts. Exactly. Yeah. So that's not a normal view. So you weren't blacked out when this happened. You were you were talking. You're, you you hurt yourself. You're clear to understand. I, I, I can, yeah, I'm tired. There. You're not, you're not slurring your word. I mean, we dealt, we dealt with thousands of drunk people in our time. You're not slurring your words. You're not, you know, you're not slop. You're not falling all over the place. You're walking around in this room recording this. Like you said, calculated. This was all you planned this and you described it, and you're talking to somebody. And, and you could have killed her in two <laughs> seconds. Exactly. And you didn't on purpose. You're calculating your what you're doing to her, and you're narrating it to us. And only you can provide the answer because this is this is disturbing to look at. I know, I don't like it. All right. Yeah. And so only you can describe can tell us what was going through your mind and why it got to that point. Did you t intend on did you go out looking for somebody? No, I, I, I wouldn't want to go out and yeah. Were, were you I, I can tell you for a straight back, I did not plan to do this. Okay. I, I've, I've done it. That's I've done it. I admit I've done that. You picked, you picked up lots of women. Uh, yeah. Um, so you didn't you didn't head out that night and pick this woman up in, no, the I, intention of killing. I did. I, I did not intend to. I, I I did not plan to go hurt anybody. So then, what happened? So <laughs> changed it. I mean, you know, I, we believe that. Look at all these other women that you. Had sex with consensually. Yeah. Some some come back to you to drink with you, just to drink with you. You're not yeah. having sex even with all, all yeah. of them. All right. But this one night with this one person, you it went out to pick her up to do the same thing you do with everybody else. And, was, and, and for some reason, yeah. So it, it, you took it one one step further. She triggered me in some way. Uh huh. For cause I don't know what would trigger me. Up there. Okay. But I don't know. So you have you've had issues with uh, rejection. Maybe in the video, the picture that you took, she looks like she's either done or not going to have sex with you. I don't know. Or you're setting the camera up to get started. That's what it looks like. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's probably us getting ready to go do something. But you're going to leave in a video, whatever it is that you're, that you're going to do with her. Um, and then what happened? You know what I mean? Well, how did it get from her, her laying on the bed waiting for you? You're getting your camera set up to go over there and... and and to get it on with her and entertain it, it to I, I don't know. Was it as simple as her turning over and saying, I'm not in the mood anymore, I'm not, not tonight? I had, I, I had rejection. You've had rejection, yeah. but not in this scenario where you're <laughs> out here in this room where you're in a room where it's like all, never, all rules are off, you know, it's all, you know, everything's I've never reacted to whatever we want. I've, I've never reacted. Um, the, the few times in my life that I've gotten violent, I, inst I instantly backed out. This, you, the, this isn't you having a flash of violence. This yeah, is, yeah, this, yeah. So this is a thirty, at least thirty minutes of video of you, yeah. honestly torturing and yeah. choking this person and having a conversation with her and other people yeah. while you're doing it. Yeah, but, but, but what I was saying is, I'm answering your thing. You're gonna that, that something trigger me, and mm -hmm. that, that something couldn't have triggered me to do that. Because it, 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 is that what you're saying? No, that's, yeah. that's, 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 that's the, the more I'm talking about the, the worse it, it's making me look. You know, if I said yes, you triggered me, it'll, it'll make me look good. But so the more well, I'm trying to trigger you, you then tell us the truth. If the truth mm -hmm. is that, that this is how you get your rocks off and this cut you off, then mm -hmm. just tell us the truth. No, I, 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 that does not get my rocks off. I don't, I don't like that. So you're worried about looking bad. I I, I do. But I, I I cannot look any bad than I do now. I mean, uh, that's true. Yeah. Someone someone who remembers every single incident surrounding an event, but doesn't remember the start of that event or anything that happened in that event. 
is pretty unbelievable. <laughs> Look, the, those those four days were fuzzy because I was thinking. I said, but yet, when we showed you photos of those other people, you said this was this night at this hotel, and this is what I did, and, and this is where I picked her up. Yeah. The only person that you will sit here and and not admit to knowing where you picked her up is this yeah. person right here. Okay. The reason why I can tell you without a goal. On uh, what night it was is because she sh took me to the place. It's, it's a place where she, she said she stays there sometimes, but I realize that's where she takes guys. So that's why I know so that she picked this person up and, and took her to the place. Yeah. But the other door in the photo, the one the, um, at the, the, the Arctic Sorry. turn place, um, the reason why I know she was there the first night was because she took me there. So therefore, she, she must have been there the first night. And the second night there, I do remember I went into a whole lot of chicken and dinners and I fell asleep in front of the TV there. Uh, I don't remember going out. So you think it looks so you think you look good? It's better not remembering than <laughs> no, it makes me <sighs> exactly what you're saying, it makes me look like I'm lying. And um I, 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 I don't remember this girl. I don't remember picking her up. I don't remember. Do you remember dropping her off, though? I don't know. Do you remember dropping her off because you took a picture in the back of your truck and threw her over? <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. Like, you, yeah. Remember, you remember her then? I, I, remember, I remember dropping off. I don't remember taking the photo. Mm -hmm. that, that is. You see how you you see how this does? You're remembering one tiny little part. Yeah. You're remembering stuff all around a part, and then we're getting one little part section of it. See how that looks? Yeah, but, 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 um, the things are a lot of stuff is happening. I, I can't remember any of I can't remember taking the photo. I did take the photo. I must have taken the photo. I mean, I was the only person there, so I did take the photo. Yes, I took that photo of me jumping the girl, but um. Uh, I don't remember picking up the phone and taking the the, the, the photo. I don't, I don't remember that action. You know, um, so, so yes, I took the photo, but I just, I just physically don't remember that. I don't remember turning my turn signal on to turn into the place. I don't remember that. I don't remember what's going on. I mean, that's a little bit different taking a picture of a dead body in the back of your truck compared to turning your turn signal. That's a bit, kind of a big event compared to a small event, right? Yeah, but, but that photo is a small event in after this. You know, that, that's just another little, it's a, it's a little photo compared to these things. So with all this stuff going on, uh, I'm not denying it. I'm just saying I don't, I don't physically remember that taking that photo. Uh, I did take it. But I just basically don't remember it, you know. Um, I don't even remember what, what, which dumpsters I went to where I dropped the, the sheet off and the, and the, and the canvas. I don't even remember that. There was just so much going on in my mind. Um, and, and that you've got to understand. There was a, a lot of stuff just going on in my mind. Um, what was going on in your mind? Well, I know I, I, this person I found, well, this person, um, back then in my mind it was that I found this person. So um, there's all that stuff. So, when you found this person in the back of your truck, this person, yeah. did you think that you put her in there or did you think somebody else did? What did you think at that moment? I can't, I can't remember. It's a very good question. Um, I am somebody that always doubts myself first. If I get accused of something, I say yes, it's me, and then find out later on I didn't. You know, but in, not in this case. This I'm not denying this. Um, I can't remember what I thought. All, all I, I know is I was panicking. Like, what the hell? Well, if you thought you somebody know, else did it, done this, you, yeah. you would. The natural instinct would be to tell somebody or call the police. <laughs> that would be. If you if you were guilty of something, I thought you might be guilty of something. Yeah. Then the reaction would be to hide it or cover it up. Exactly. For normal. And and I was guilty of being at a hotel room girl. So and then ended up with a dead woman in your back of your truck. Yes. Now I would have if, if, 
the first thing is if 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 if, if they have gotten out, if I went to the police, I, I know that I know that could have gone through my mind. It's one of the reasons why I would have done what I did. Is if they, if I went to the police and said I did this, they would say, okay, well, exactly like you guys did, trace back where were you? Where would somebody have done this in your vehicle? And the last time I would have checked the back of my truck would have actually been that night. That uh, the last night that I was at the hotel because I would have thrown my stuff in the back there. So you would put your small little duffel bag in the back of your truck and set it in the side seat or the back seat of the truck because it's an extra cab, right? Um, yeah, it's extra cab. No, no, I would have like if, if I went and bought food or, or gears or something, I would just I'd stick it in the back. In the to- in the rear, way back. Yeah. I would just open the thing. And that's where I would put anything that I would be carrying. Oh. You know? So, um, the, so the last time, what I'm trying to say is, the last time I checked in the back, the back of my truck would have probably been that night when I got back, got finished work, and I went to the hotel. And if I bought anything, I would have probably just thrown it in the back, and I would have taken it out there. So it's fair to say the body wasn't there then. Uh, yes. Well, obviously we know it wasn't, but we were talking about the the, the, the day I found it. You know. Um, the, 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 that, that morning when I opened up and it was there, I, I, I would have known it wasn't there the night before. So therefore, I would have known it would have happened that night. And that's why um, if I go to the police, if I'd gone to anyone, they would have said, where were you? And they would have traced me to the hotel and there were girls there and my wife would have found out. And that, 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 that is, in my mind, why I know I probably would not have found it, but I would have kept it dead right. Your biggest worry in this whole thing, knowing everything you know and everything you already knew, your biggest worry is your wife finding out you were with other girls. Is that what scares you the most? Your wife finding out about that? Because what happens to you if your wife finds out about that? What does your wife have to do? Well, it will hurt my wife a lot. And will she will she stay with you? Will she leave you? Oh, she will. We divorced. Then now we divorced. I mean, she's. What happens to you if you and your wife divorced a week ago or ten days ago prior to? I mean, you said you recently. If you just had gotten caught for picking up girls, yeah. Oh, well, it, uh, yeah, my wife probably would have. Um, I think I actually don't know. She might have wanted to work through it, or she would have wanted to divorce or something like that. <laughs> if you try to bring the immigration thing to this, it's it's it's. Uh, the, the, I'm, not, I'm just trying to figure out what scares you most about because. If I'm understanding you right, your biggest worry about having a girl in the back of your truck. Was your wife finding out that you were sleeping with prostitutes and girls that were walking around? That's your biggest fear. Yeah. You saw that girl back your truck, like, oh, if my wife, if I tell the police about this, my wife's going to be mad that I was sleeping with other women. Yeah, yeah. Well, everybody would find out because it would become public. So your uh, biggest worry wasn't that you had a dead girl in the back of your truck? Oh, yes, obviously. <laughs> so, so I see where you're going with it. Yes, I, 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 I was worried about that. That's why I thought if I jumped for the. When I finally saw the place, I thought, okay, well, this is cool. People stop here. Somebody will find it. And but then what did you do with the blanket in the car? I went to dump it in the dumpster. And why did you dump it right there with her? Yeah, well, I don't, I don't know why. Well, you said, you, said you, didn't want to, you didn't want people to see it. And be honest. Yeah, 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 but I, I don't know why I didn't do that and put a sign up and say, hey, you're the, you're the dead person. Um, so you, in the, you just wiggled her and you didn't want her to be found immediately. That's why you did that. Yeah. That's why you got on where you're out of town and check and see if that body has been down yet. Uh, no, but, uh, that's why when you walked in this room tonight, you knew exactly, you knew exactly what we were talking about. You had a hunch. You're smart. I, I had a hunch. You're smart. I had a hunch. The Brian Smith smart guy had a hunch. Yeah. Um, and Brian, this Brian, Brian Smith, the smart guy, knew what Brian Smith, the bad guy, did, or what Bradley Phillips did. And you had to have a thought process in your mind, whether it was on the plane or in D.C. or the 2nd of uh, October when you read that article, which we know you did because we saw your Google search, yeah. that what am I going to do if somehow, some way, I get connected? What am I going to say? And apparently what you came up with was, I will just tell them. I don't know. I forgot, and I can't remember. Mm. And I clearly didn't know everything that we had, unless you do know what happened with that micro SD. I think you think you might have an idea what happened to that. I think you might know how we got that into our hands. But regardless, yeah, you, you had to know if we got that in our hands that it was not going to be good for you because you know what you did in that video. 
Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I did not. I did not realize this. I did not know this. No, you didn't know it, right? Yeah. You, you, you're, still, know, yeah. you're still saying you didn't know that. that, that. <laughs> Brian, you knew what you did. In, you knew what you did in the SD card, and you had it in your head. You you had a little bit of glimmer of light that maybe they haven't found that SD card. Maybe they don't have that SD card, and they'll never tie that that body over there to me. You had that little bit of hope, and that, but then you were on the other side. You're like, but if they did. This is what I'm going to be ready. This is what I'm going to say. This is this, and you clearly didn't know you were going to have your license plate in, in the photos, right? Yeah, that's. I would not do if, if I had to do something like this. I would not do that. That's right. You wouldn't plan that this way. Yeah. All right. So so clearly it wasn't planned. Yeah. Not that wasn't thought out very well. It it, it was something that happened. Yeah. But it wasn't something that was planned. There was absolutely, you can tell yeah. there's no planning on this. Yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah, it, 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 it's, it's, it's stupid. It doesn't make sense. It's, this is a, this is someone who's an amateur. Doesn't know what the hell they're doing. Well, this is and, you. And I'm, I'm cleverer than that. If you are. So you would have never, you didn't mean to lose that SD card. You didn't mean for it to end up in our hands. Because you know in your head that if we had never found that SD card, then we wouldn't be here and right that wouldn't. Yeah. Now, but now you know, now you realize that we do. Mm -hmm. And now you're trying to figure out how to get yourself out of it. I can't get out of it. You, you got evidence on going to the jail. I mean, there's, um, you, 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 right? This, this, yeah, so, so, with everything that we have here, the smart Brian Smith is going to sit here and say, I remember everything except the time I picked her up and where until. The next day, when this person just happens to be in the back of my truck, and I wait two days, I don't know what to do, and then I happen to just take a picture because I don't remember what I did. And I thought, well, well, I mean, I'll just take a picture of this dead person who I find in the back of my truck. No, this is you bolstering, yeah. just like you did with the with the drunk prostitute that you just had sex with. That probably doesn't even know you had sex with her. Yeah, and your words. This is just you bolstering. Yeah, this is just you bolstering, also, right? Both of these are the not smart yeah. Brian Smith because the smart, not smart Brian Smith doesn't go out and have dangerous sex with someone who's probably had sex with God knows how many people. That's the type of second life or whatever that that you have going on, right? But the Brian Smith knows that that's happened. The smart Brian Smith, and he has to know that there's a logical explanation that maybe that doesn't make sense to people or it sounds weird or it sounds kinky or it sounds bad but the video portrays that there's no getting around that so yeah. the, there's no getting around the, the way you're talking the the how direct you're being how, how intentional you're being how, with the narrative that you're doing what's the smart brian smith going to say I don't know. I, 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 I can tell you that I am worried that I'm going to say something that's going to be in trouble. I know I'm in trouble. There's no line, but I'm scared I, I say something that gets me into bad, worse trouble. That makes it look like I'm a really bad person. I am a really bad person, according to this. So uh, you're worried that you could say something that would make you sound worse than you than what I already have. Yeah. Then, so we already know what you what 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 you are, and what you did this night, right? Mm -hmm. What what do you think of yourself? I don't know. Because I'm disgusted that I've done something like this. Um, do, you, do you think that? And I'm not saying it was entirely intentional, but do you think that you, the good Brian that we're talking to, apparently we haven't seen the bad Brian yet because bad Brian did this? Do you think good Brian wanted bad Brian to get caught? That's why somebody made it so easy for us? It could be a. I read a book once on um, what is called The Secret, and it's about how to do well in life and 
One of the things they said was um, you must never underestimate the power of negative thinking. That you, you don't want to go to work today, so you will subconsciously start making yourself feel sick and subconsciously drive erratic so that you bump someone else so that you just don't get to work. You will actually create that future. If you, if, you, if, you, if you don't want something to happen or you want something to happen, and that was the thing about the, the positive thinking, you can make things happen. If I don't believe a good or bad Brian, but a good Brian might subconsciously do things that would make, make him be caught, to put it that way. Is my English coming through there? Um, to what? everything that is so stupid. That what is so what right now? A good Brian, I'm assuming, is who we have here. What do you feel right now about this moment? What do you feel about this? Well, she's a pretty girl, and if she ended up like that, that's that's such a waste. So knowing that this this person is this person, and this person's dead, and you didn't want to dump the body out in the, on the highway, do you have remorse? Yeah, seeing, yeah I, don't, I, I don't like to, to know that I've done that to someone. It's a, I, don't, I don't like that. I don't, don't. And she, she's a, she has family, right? She has family. Her family doesn't even know yet. They haven't told them. Yeah. Well, you know, she, it's, does yeah. she deserve to be no, outside of the guardrail, mile 108? No. Is that where you would want your wife to be? No. no your sister? No. 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 So, so did good Brian or bad Brian do that to this woman and to her family? If this, if somebody had done this to your sister, I would kill them. So, if someone who hurt my sister, uh, I would kill them. And I told that to Stephanie as well. So, tell us what. What is what 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 would what you be thinking in documenting? Each step of this. You took photos of the hotel room, you took photos of the entry, you took photos of the door open. We can see your shoes. You took photos of her on the floor, you took photos of her after you wrapped her up and posed her mm. on the bed. You took photos of her in the, I mean, you documented each step of this, not only with video, but with photographs. Mm -hmm. Help us understand that. We're, we're here, we're just, it, it helps us understand what. Yeah understand you that's what we're trying to do is understand it because it because we'd like to be able to tell her family something that makes some type of sense to them and it might in your mind right now it might not mean that but i think that would be better than this person won't take responsibility for well, that's what what you did. Did. well you're not uh, that's the problem. what what's been confusing me is all of this. I would not do that. If I, if I did something wrong, I wouldn't take photographs of it. Um, well, okay, but I, this, is, this is you. This is, this is, this is yeah. good, Brian. So, who all he's oh, doing is trying to not get caught having sex with someone. <laughs> and he's more worried about that than he is this person rotting and being eaten by animals yeah. at mile 108 and a half. If somebody had put your sister out there at mile 108 and a half and the coyotes and magpies and any other rodent that is out there yeah. that eat not her for a month. Yeah. Does good Brian have a conscience about that? Yes, I do. I, uh, I, I don't I don't want to hurt people. Uh, I believe that. I, 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 I don't believe I, I believe that for I mean I don't believe that you're intended on hurting her. You all these people that other people you've had sex with and have picked up, you know what? We're not getting calls from them saying saying some dude picked me up in a black truck. Because if that was happening, we've worked sex the, the sex assault unit. We would know it. Mm. We would know that truck. And we're not getting that. So yeah. generally that person that's out there picking up their prostitutes. It's just an average Joe that's, that's mm -hmm. having sex. And and you know what? Everybody that's doing that, almost everybody's doing that, is because they're not having sex at home. That's not a, a, a theme that we haven't heard before. Yeah. The, the videos I took of other girls, um, if they did come out good, I know I would have put them on Europe right now. You know, 
Um, but there's no way for, for me to put this. So I can't understand my reasoning why I would have taken these photographs. So taking these photographs is going to get you bored. <laughs> So do you want to stop yourself? Am I trying? Yeah. No. No. Uh, uh, that makes it makes a bit more sense to me the way I know myself. How's that? That I would want to get caught for something. That um, it, it sounds stupid, but it does, and it makes sense, and that's why I, I asked that that line of questioning. It's not the first time we've, we've, we've heard that from people. Well, I well, don't take photographs on my truck. Um, why would I, you know, I can think to myself, maybe those ones would have to do to take a photograph to remind me what the hell. Obviously, why are we reminded of that? No, no, this happens, something happened, you know. Um, for me to take photographs like this, that, 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 that's stupid. So do, so don't you agree that this, is this is the same bolstering as at, at the end of this story, just like the end of this when this woman's drunk, you've had sex with her. I wouldn't, I wouldn't boast about it. I, 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 I can tell you that I do know for a fact that any photo you take on your phone, go into the cloud and whatever, um, your, your, your Apple phone, um, your stuff gets anything you take is gone somewhere. But you, um, but what you're doing on that video is both strange the whole time. Yeah, yeah. You're saying you wouldn't so, do it, but that you are doing it. Somebody, so, somebody's doing it. Yeah. So, so I know that if I get a video of a of me spending a girl, I know it's gonna some it's gonna be up. Um. So then you wanted to get caught. You wanted to stop the the thoughts that you were starting to have as. Of what you wanted to do to people, and then you and then ultimately followed through with it and felt bad. No, I, 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 I've not fantasized about killing people. Um, I've, I haven't done that. Um, I, 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 I knew from from this year. Mm -hmm. I knew that I've done something. I knew I, I, I knew Brian had done something. You know. Um, seeing these pictures tells me what I've done. And I know you don't believe me, but I don't remember. I did it. That's on video, so I'm not denying it. I'll sign a piece of paper. Yes, I did it. I know I did it. You, 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 you've shown me. But I don't remember it. I don't remember why I did it. Um, again, like I told you with the, the video of that book about the secret, where you, the power of subconscious thinking. If I did this, if I took these photos like this, it was to lead to something. And um, taking photos gets you caught. <laughs> I know that any photo on my phone would go into the cloud, it would be on. But, um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure those photos that, that the guy bought from my phone were deleted off my phone. He, he undeleted them. I, I know these things happen. Yeah. Then you know you can't delete things. Yeah, it's stay there. Yeah. Um, I've, I've even, though, even though you told Alicia, you know how to delete permanently delete things. Oh yes, yeah. I mean, that, that's me and her. But you can't because they get captured. Yeah. Um, uh, you can. Um, what you? Okay. <laughs> I'll teach you something quickly. Here's a file, your um, Excel spreadsheet, yeah, of your monthly whatever. And it's got a file name, budget, June 2008 or to 2019. Okay. When you delete something in Windows, so this is specific Windows, not Apple, I don't know how they work. Um, the information is not deleted. The name of the file gets deleted. Uh, the, the, the first letter, of that file name basically gets turned into an illegal character that can't be a file name. You know, you know sometimes you'll type in something and it says, no, you can't use a backslash, you can't miss space. The same thing. So I know I've got a big IT background. Um, so that file is still on the computer. 
So um, if you want to permanently, okay, oh yeah, so, so now you, you get underneath software, it just goes and looks for file names that have got an illegal character. And then it, 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 it puts a legal character and brings it up again. Okay. Um, when your computer wants to save another file, here's another file out of the budget for July 2019. Your computer goes along and finds free space. And it goes along and says, oh, yeah, he has a file name, but it's an illegal file name, which means I can use it. And then it'll overwrite that file. And that is how you can, if you're using that logic, that is how what I taught my students, how you can permanently delete something. You've got to, you delete it, and then you write over it. So, as many times as you want to, that's how you can permanently delete something. Um, so, so, yes, I, I know how to permanently delete something, uh, if that's what Alicia was talking about. And that's probably, I can't remember what our conversations, most of our conversations involve mics and vodka. So uh, I would have boasted about my IT background, you know, that I don't know how to delete things and whatever. So, um, so Going off the subject again, if you if you do ever delete something accidentally on your computer, stop and leave your computer right there and phone your IT guy immediately. If you shut down your windows, you know your windows like make sticking noises while when it's shutting down. It's actually writing all the memory back down onto the computer again, the stuff that was in the the, in the memory memory. Uh, and then you run a chance of overwriting that file that I told you about. That's still there, the information still there. It's just got an illegal name. So, um, anyway, um, I'll the other bit. But th that's what I would have told Alicia. Alicia and I were boasting about stuff. The, the, uh, I'm not going to say anything bad about her because I don't want to get in trouble. She's a nice girl. I really like her. Um, that there is a half of a heart. The other half of the side is on her hand. Hello. So that's how we've, we went that far. But um, when she left, I realized, you know, she was bad for me. She was poisoned. Uh, and I was poisoned to her. I knew that if I gave her alcohol, she gave me sex. So I was bad for her. And we were bad for each other. So, yeah, we, we, we posted to each other. So I wouldn't take anything serious. Okay. So just, she's done crazy stuff, bad stuff. I've done bad stuff, and, and that was our boasting stuff. You know, each day, well, each time that we boasted, it was like making up a bigger, better, worse story. So back to the subject at hand. Yeah, this is Ken. Oh yeah. Are we at a stalemate? No. Um, all of this tells me that I, I probably wanted to get caught. Because you knew what you did or were doing was bad? Yeah, I knew that this was bad. This, 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 <laughs> this girl is pretty. Uh, um, she's, she is. She's very pretty. Um, I know. She's, she's, not, she's not your typical... Probably. Oh, yeah. Do you remember in there where there, I don't know where the pictures are, but um, she looks pretty clean. How long was she in your hotel room? Did she, did she clean herself up? Do you know, did she shave her armpits and shave her genitals and that kind of stuff? Or was it already done? Cause she looks pretty, pretty, uh, they are, as you say, I've got girls confused, and I, I have. I mean, I've been talking, and I'm like, oh goodness, everyone. That um, I might have gotten her confused, some, but I don't. Don't remember. You can remember the one that you recorded for over thirty minutes. Right. You only took pictures of a couple snapshots of these other ones. Yeah. yeah. You remember, and is it a possibility that what you're describing, the way you think of the computer, that maybe you just had a black, you're just, you see it in there, it's there, but you're just not wanting to tell, you're just, 
it's that weird. You just don't want to talk about it at this point. Even though you know you should, because like you said, it's maybe like you wanted to get caught. You knew that if you didn't get caught, that you were going to have to live the rest of your life knowing what you did to her. And there and might so, be another one then. There could be another one. But you wanted to get caught uh, to make sure that it didn't happen. Yeah, right? to prevent anything else happening. Absolutely. Um, so that's why you were a little bit sloppy with taking pictures of her truck and out in the parking lot where we knew you knew we were going to find that that's where you were. Yeah. Maybe it was that sloppy that you let that other girl get that SD card and you asked her about it. It's like, hey, where's that card? That's my work card. And she denied maybe it fell out. Maybe, you remember that, right? But you weren't that concerned about it because if you were really concerned about losing that card, which you knew what was on there, then you would have done something about it to get that back from her, no matter what you need to do to prevent getting caught. But like you said, maybe in your mind, you really actually wanted to get caught. Did you say somebody gave you that card and they, and they said that I spoke about it? You recalling that? Is that what you're telling me about? No. That? No, I don't remember. How do you think somebody got that? I mean, yeah. For, obviously, that, it, that, that would have been in my truck. Yeah, why didn't it just, but it, wasn't, it doesn't work in this phone, you said. So, whose phone do I use? Oh, um, you can just double check with this phone to see if it works. Yeah. Uh, maybe you can tell me. Um, I. Buy and sell phones, I fix them in buy and sell. So um, I, I've had many phones. And this one I've got probably the beginning of this year. Before that, I had a, the, the Note 4. Um, before that, I had something else. You know, so I, I, what I, did you have September 4th? This phone, this phone, yeah. So, to, so does this card fit in that phone? Well, some phones take that, some don't. Does that take, does this phone you have right here take that type of card? I don't know. Because... Have you ever put this type of card in that phone? I don't know. I don't, I don't think that phone, that phone can take the, this card. Have you ever put any kind of card? Yes, I have. I have. So for what? Well, uh, some phones, like, like, like your, uh, your iPhones, uh, don't take SD cards. So they've, got, they've got enough built-in memory. So if you've got a phone that doesn't have enough built-in memory, like the Note 3 that I've got, or the Note 4, that thing doesn't have enough built-in memory, so it's got a slot. So the, the, the new phones are all going away from using SD cards, and they, they've got built-in memory, and that's why they also automatically upload to the cloud. So this phone... If you put it on an SD card, it doesn't automatically up upload to the cloud. It's, it's, it's stored here. Okay. This phone that you have right now, which you had September 4th, yeah. it takes cards. Does it? Well, I'm asking. Oh, no, I, I, what I'm trying to say is that I'm, I, I see we're getting, uh, we're getting tense here. Uh, I don't know because I, 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 go, I go through so many phones. So you don't, don't, you don't recall if this phone yeah. that you have takes yeah. SD cards. But if you if you go you have a quick look, open up back and see if it does. That's the only way you, you know. Uh, but I, uh, the, the phone that was stolen out or that um, whatever I lost, that one might have had. Uh, that's all I can think is that that one would have taken SD cards because that was an older phone. That was like a little twenty dollar phone. So that one definitely would have taken SD cards, and that. Was gone before this. Oh. Did you, you made a report to the police about your truck being broken into prior to September fourth? Was it before? Yeah. Did you lose the phone other than that time and after the September fourth incident? At least I lost the phone after that. How did that happen? Can you tell me any last time? Well, that's the only thing I could think is that some girl took the phone. But like I was trying to explain to you, I, I, yeah, in Alaska, people don't steal phones. So uh, um, I wouldn't have thought of that she took it. But I, I did notice that the phone was missing. I did, I did notice that the, the, the little phone that was lying in the front is missing. And that's why I mentioned it. So that's the only phone I can think of that had that. But me again, I will tell you that, oh, but you say these things are zoomed. Um, you can see the photo of my stomach. That's a brilliant clear photograph. Uh, these other ones are all fuzzy. So you can take off the, the video of the SD card. Look at that one over there. Uh, did that come off my phone or off the SD card? Oh, that, that's, that's from the SD card. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a different phone. 
Then that, then that, yeah. But then that one of mine takes like really it takes like this kind of resolution. So which phone did you take that with? So all I can think is that's the the, the, the little phone that I was that I was selling and I must have put that SD card in that little phone and called it. And you, have you sold that phone, or where's that phone at? Well, that, that's the one that that's gone, and I was assuming it was taken. It was taken in the in the, in the when they broke the window and it stole my stuff. I'm assuming it was that, but now if I'm, if I'm putting it together, I, that phone is probably still in the car, and I used that car, or that phone on this. How many prostitutes have you picked up since September four? I don't. Or after this, so this this should this should have scared smart Bruce. How many prostitutes did you pick up after you found a dead prostitute in your back of your truck, or a homeless person? They they found they were passed out drunk on the ground. That was after. Yeah, we did. We all did. Just one. So any more females after that? I don't think so. Any pick? Did you pick any up and just talk about things? To not have sex, or did you pick any other? Um, just drink, or um, I, I, I do. I have picked up many girls, and we'll just sit outside of Safeway and just sit and chat and talk. Um, like I said, I know for a fact when I've had enough to drink, I don't work, so trying to do anything is a waste. And uh, yeah, I, I, I have on many occasions picked up girls uh, just to talk, uh, and uh, but I can't remember. If I've done anything since that happened, that that drunk call, yes, I remember that, and that that would have been one of those things where I've driven past and there's someone on the side of the road and it's bugging me and bugging me and bugging me. Did it worry you that even after knowing that, what, picking up other girls, did you worry that have it worry right back your head that that was going to happen again? What happened in that hotel room? No. Oh, are you worried you're going to wake up the next day and there would be a dead, dead body in the back of your truck when you went to go pick up them other girls? Especially the one that would pass out drunk in the, in the ground there? That's probably why I just left it. But um, if, if there was something in the back of my mind that I'm worried about waking up, then that would be that would explain why I just left it there. And also, uh, she was drunk. I, wasn't, I wouldn't have known where to take her. Um, but I... I, I um, Yes, if, if if I was worried that I'm going to have more people, I would wake up and there's people in the back of my truck. Um, yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to do any more. I wouldn't be going out. And, and I, 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 I did scare me. That, 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 that did scare me. That incident did scare me. And I would have to make you stop going to get up. Which incident? Well, the, the dropping the door off. You know, finding. You know, that thing's going on the side. Is scary that you kill somebody? Well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure in the back of my mind, I knew that I was involved there some way. It, it's, it, it, it's, it's stupid to believe that someone else kills someone and puts them in the back of your truck. I would have known that in the back of my mind that there was something. So you knew in the back of your head that you had done something? I, 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 I did suspect it, but I. I you knew in the back of the head, the side of your head, the front of your head, you knew you would kill somebody. Yeah. I, I, I knew there was something funny going on. I knew there was something that happened. You, 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 don't stuff you, you wanted to get caught. It's basically what you've been telling us. Back, you knew you wanted to get caught because you were afraid it was going to happen again because you knew what you did. Is that right? I could probably say that. But, uh, yeah. yeah. I can't believe I did this, so therefore I can't believe I would do it again, but Subconsciously, I knew I've probably done something. I, I, I did know something something bad had happened. I knew that. And I probably didn't want to prevent anything else happening again. You knew you lost control. You couldn't control it. it was, you were afraid it was going to happen again. Yeah, I don't like it. I don't, if there is something about me, I don't like losing control of something. Mm -hmm. That's why I, I, I was 28 years old when I took me for the first time. I was scared I'll, I'll get addicted. Uh, I had a nose job the other day last year, and they gave me pain pills, and my wife said, oh, those are opioids. And I put them down, I did a bunch of my lip was pain. I was, I was, I was so scared of it. You knew what you did, you were scared of getting hooked up, maybe enjoying it too much and doing it again. You knew that was a possibility that that was going to happen. Probably. Although I... I 
maybe not enjoying it, but maybe. you enjoyed it. You watched the videos, and I'm, I mean, we can sit here and watch them all, but it's clear that you were enjoying what you were doing. You're giggling. You're laughing. I'm fucked up. You're calling her a bitch and telling her to die. Well, you're, you're, so you're the smart Brian's the normal good person, but that part of Brian or Bradley that is doing this has, has some, some stuff that needs to be talked about and has some issues that need to be worked through. You don't work through shit like this. Yeah, you do. Yeah, there's people that you work through this. There's, there's, this kind of stuff happens for a reason. One of my big arguments about life and crime and why we need these politicians is that you've got to nip crime in the bud. The I don't know if that's an American term. Yeah. <laughs> I've often said, you know, little Johnny walks down the street and he throws a stone through the window and he like realizes, oh, I've got away with it. And tomorrow he throws a brick through the window, like he gets away with it. He gets brave and he walk into a shop and steal a little candy bar and he gets away and he, it, it, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And then one day little Johnny goes and kills somebody. You know, and if you'd stopped him when he stole that candy bar, he would never have gotten that line. So what so what so, what what should you have been stopped doing before you killed somebody? What what would have stopped this from happening? I don't know. Picking up prostitutes? DUI? Oh, what, what are the things that oh yeah. Um because you're little Johnny right here now. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember progressing like this. Um, well, this is quite quickly. Very quickly. Um, I, 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 I can tell you I respect the police a lot because of the work they do. But I know that if I've got a drink inside of me, a couple of drinks, I'm not scared to drive around. You lose your, you lose your inhibition. Yeah. And, and uh, that is disrespectful and it's not right. And, uh, uh, sooner or later, that would have gotten out of control. Sooner or later, the, I know, you know, we all know, and speak to any paramedic, 90% of the people knocked over on the side of the street are knocked over by a drunk driver. And I was clearly in that. In that. You were snowballing. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I would sit, like I said, I, I had sat with girls in my truck right outside of Safeway there. And uh, they, they, they see you coming out of the liquor store and stuff, and you get in the truck, and they like jump in and just park right there and finish off a bottle of vodka. With Alicia, we uh, us taking a bottle of vodka and going and sitting on the side of the road drinking it was nothing. It was, a, and then I'm still driving around to be a pick up a kid from uh, kindergarten, school. and we both got like half a bottle each inside of us. So. Sooner or later, that has to stop. And I've, I've known in my life, every now and then I get out of control or something, and something bad happens, and it's, it saves me. That um, the time when I was arrested for the DUI, I mean, I told you I was drunk, and I waved at the police. I mean, what kind of sane person waves at the police? You know, he knew I was drunk. He knew he saw I didn't have a helmet on, so obviously drunk. So um, when when that happened. I stopped drinking for like two, three years. I was so, you know, I, I learned a lesson from that. Um, I know with my drinking now, I'm not blaming this on drinking. Um, sooner or later, I was going to, if it wasn't that, I was going to kill someone in that guy. But... So, I think we need to take another break. So are we leaving it at, just so I know, Good Brad here is going to say, is still saying, I did it, I must have done it, I can see myself doing it, I can see your videos, I see what you guys are saying, but I'm not willing to give an explanation, good or bad, or for it happening. Well, I'm trying to work to figure out why I did something like it. I admit I did it, but I'm, I'm telling you, I, I don't have the memories in my brain of that. Something has blocked that happening, though. Something is dropped it in my head. So you you're only admitting that you're that you did it because people see that that's you doing it. That's yes. Uh, 
And I, I, I did do it. But, but, I, you have, but you're saying you have no independent recollection. I don't. And, and I know that anything that night. Yeah. I, I know that we all talk about Bolton's and not having any recollection. Well, everybody knows he was lying. Yeah. So, 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 so he sounds ridiculous. Yeah. So, so I'm, not, I'm not trying to think, you know, he got away with it. I can hear it. That, that's not well, my He didn't get away with it. Yeah. But you, you know what, what I mean, you know. I'm not saying it's because of that. I'm, I, I honestly don't. I, I'm, I'm trying to visualize it in my head and I, I can't remember doing this. I, I can't. I've been so high on adrenaline. Big stuff, you know. Adrenaline. Yeah. You know. Because well, yeah, yeah. you just killed somebody with your bare hands. Yeah. And I don't understand. I have got weak thumbs. So I. Yeah. But you stood on it. Yeah. That's yes, you said your hands got yeah. tired. So you, yeah. you say that. Yeah, so you said that. Yeah, so yeah, that's me. It's definitely me. But I, yeah. I, I, I don't have the memory of it. I had the chest. There was my, my sternum was sore for like three, four days later. So I know somebody was hitting me. You know, there, there, there was she. She was obviously fighting back, or she hit me, or you know, get out of my way, or something. So, you know, she was resisting. She was trying to get away from you. Yeah. yeah. You beat the tar out of her. Yeah. yeah. To get her on the ground. Yeah, that's that, yeah. And I know you. Your thing that says if someone says trust me or believe me, it's a lie. But I, I, I do not remember. I can't. I can't put the images in my brain. And and I got that's just because you won't let yourself believe you did it. That's probably what it is. I I, I, I don't want to believe I've done that. I really I don't want to believe it. But it's about time to start believing that you did it because we've yeah. shown you that. No, no, I, I I believe I've done it, but I don't want to. It's it's it's. I, I wish I had not ever. Well, obviously, yeah. anybody would. But she's a pretty girl. I mean, um, by nature, we more aggressive towards ugly people than pretty people. I'm sure you've picked that up in your life. You know, um, if there's an ugly girl or a pretty girl on the side of the road with a flat tire, which one will you stop to help? You'll stop to help the pretty one. You know, hurting a pretty person. So, yeah, so we're not going to say, I've done it. I, I, I just don't know why. You just have no explanation for good or bad of why it's, it's why it happened. Yeah. The, the photographs are stupid. You say that somebody took the SD card out of my truck and I said, no, give it back. It belongs to work or something. That's what you said. Um, if, if I knew... If I was trying to hide away and not get caught, I would not let something like it happen. I, I wouldn't have it. careless. I wouldn't have it. But, but all, all this seems careless, too. Then, you know, that's somebody that wants to get caught. And you're in a hotel room for In your own hotel, in your own chain of, using your own name with your own employee discount. Yeah. With your own truck. Taking, documenting every step of what yeah. you did. And if you might think of it, um, at uh, University Lake, uh, when I started there, I was a driver, and I, I did night shift for a few times. And at night time, the building's quiet. Like at 11, 12 o'clock at night, it's the building's quiet. Mm -hmm. If somebody just has a slight little scream, the neighbors hear about it. And, and, and I remember being called, and I was sitting there waiting for, to pick up somebody at the airport, and I had to go to room 122 or whatever because there's a disturbance. There's someone screaming in the room. So doing something like this, I mean, you've got to silence somebody instantly so they don't scream. I mean, that, that is a huge risk doing that with people all around you. They get everything to find the police in the moment they get it. But you can see the photo you took with you in it. Look what she's, she's unconscious. She's, she, she's drank so much that she's, Unconscious or something doesn't appear to be beat up there yet, but she's it's it hasn't started yet, but it's about to. 
So yeah, we, I think we are, I know I need to go to the bathroom. We'll have somebody big run you down the bathroom. Do you want anything to eat or drink at this point yet? Because no. we're going to move on, I think, to the to the next step of this. I was just going to ask, do you feel like, have we been fair with you today? Have you, have you been respectful with you? Have we bullied you? No, no, no. no. Uh, I know these are technicalities. We're trying to treat you like a... Yeah, I, I, I really appreciate that. Like you said, you could have... Yeah, we really made a search out of this. Yeah. Um, so we, what we have is a search warrant that we're going to serve on you, and it's basically as simple as collecting a sample of your DNA, which is swatted inside of your mouth. We're going to get some photographs of you while you're clothed and while you're unclothed. Okay, then we'll go from there and explain what's going to happen next. So we're going to take your shoes. We're going to let have it out, and then we're going to ultimately take your clothes just because we have the search warrant for that. All right. Mm -hmm. Are you going to take me off to prison? Yes, that's that's the step at the end of this night. Okay. So I'm not going to see my wife again. Well, that depends on what 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 she does. I don't know if they're done talking to her. I don't know what the extent of that is. I doubt I, I doubt very much we're done at your house. Taking the trust, we have a search warrant to search the trust, lots of super biological evidence. And, um, I don't know what all we're going to find. What, what else are we going to find? Anything else in those searches? I don't know. You don't know? Have you ever killed anybody else? I'll just be straight up with you. Oh, uh, are we going to find any evidence that you're attached to any missing persons either here or South Africa? No, that, that's big talk. That I, I told you that was a big talk between. Okay, but but, but uh, yeah. I, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, right. You know, because the, the the video that we watched, frankly, it doesn't look like an amateur. Everything else does, but it doesn't look like the person in that video. Really killed, it doesn't look like it's the first time they've killed somebody. You're enjoying yourself, um, killing her. Mm -hmm. So if there's something else we need to talk about, now would be the time to do it. There's not. Have you been involved in any missing persons or any other murders in the yes. state of Alaska? No, I have not. No, it's just the only person you've ever killed. Yes. And so we don't need to be looking at other people. No. Yeah. Probably won't take you out that word because yeah. you probably are obligated to look at everything you've been doing since you got here based on the talk that you've been talking, whether it's real or not real, and see where your phone's been and where you've been. Okay. Well, if you have to understand what you got to do. Okay. My last Good question to you. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. But please find that girl at the homeless place. We'll, 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 we'll go there. You know, you know, and as many girls as you picked up, frankly, yeah. it looks like we're going to have to talk to quite a few girls to see what type of <laughs> encounter they had with you. Would that be fair to say that we, are we going to find any other girls that are going to tell us that, yeah, he liked joking, he liked me to talk dirty to him, he might go, what, what kind of fetish, what kind of things are we oh. going to hear from these girls? Because they uh, have a pretty good memory, especially someone with your accent it, and your vehicle. This is, this, um, yeah. um, I have not, I have not tried to choke anybody. Um, I, I, no, I have not tried to choke okay, anybody. Okay, and, and no. you saying that, this makes me, I, I just, I can't, I can't get past why this happened then. I, I can't understand if you're you're sitting here adamantly telling us that there's nobody else. You've never done this before. You haven't even acted this out with a prostitute. You've never, or a homeless person, you've never choked anybody or anything. And then it goes from zero to 100 and well, somebody's dead. And so I, that, I'm, I'm just so curious as to why Bad Brian or Bradley or whatever, what, how that would happen and what the thought, thought process was in that person's mind when that happened. It's, but only he knows, only now. Only he knows. And he, many, he's trying to reckon with it in himself, apparently, but that's, uh, you know, I, I do, I, I think that, and I hope that, that someday, because, I, but because we've been so fair with you, I, I hope that someday when you are ready to talk about this, that you're willing to do that so that we can learn and so that we can understand that because what we've been doing for the last week or days is looking at that thing, that video and those photographs. 
studying you and trying to figure it out. Mm-hmm. So if you ever get to that point, um, where are you willing to talk and tell us what, why, if you can figure that out, I, I, I would appreciate it. Keep that with you. What do you want to go to prison? I'm not going to. You get to keep that. You, you get to make phone calls. I don't know what to talk to now. What's that? I don't know what to talk to now. So. None of my friends or anybody. Well, it, it's, 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 this is my fault. I've, I've dug my own grave, you know. Uh, I did this to myself. I can't blame anybody else. Yeah. But, anyway, yeah. The one thing I wanted to ask you is your truck, did you ever wash it out, spray it out, anything like that? After this, after you dug the body. Are we going to find biological evidence in your truck? <laughs> did you bleach it? Did you wash it? Um, the at the back, I had a piece of carpeting at the back, and there was a bit of blood on it. So I cut that piece of carpet out and I tossed it in the dumpster. And uh, I did spray bleach on there to try and kill the germs and whatever. Um, that was a wise thing to do, and unlike everything else. Um, so you'll you'll see the back of my truck beans, it's it's cut, you know. Yeah. All right, I think we'll let's give him a pee break and that kind of yeah. stuff before we do that. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm fine. Okay, we, yeah. we have to take one, so yeah. I think we might as well send them and let, let you go down there first. Yeah. 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 Now just uh, have a seat. Right. Right. Yeah. Get somebody. Okay. Take a break. <clears throat> Fifteen minutes. <clears throat> We're back on record in State versus Brian Smith, three a.m. nineteen ninety nine or one's here. Mr. Smith is here. Counselor here. We're going to distribute the uh, instruction that we've been talking about. moment to read that and see if you have any additional changes you want to suggest. Um, The only correction I have is I think the second paragraph, the original draft is motive and plan, not motive and opportunity. I do think it's up to the court why it's admitted. Second paragraph was... Is originally proposed, you're you're wondering, was it motive and opportunity? I believe this motive and plan. Motive and plan was my proposal, but you're the one that says why they can consider it. No, that's a fair. I didn't intend to change that. I was just, uh, yeah, motive and plan. I'll I'll line that out. We'll have a corrected instruction in the final packet, but I'll read it that way. Anything else? Uh, yes, just one of your, an issue. I guess I think the state has one issue, and then I have one issue to follow up on from yesterday. I'd ask to address the sidebar. Okay. Go forward. Bring the jury in. <laughs> Please be seated, everyone. We have our jury back with us. It's 1037. And uh, everyone is here that needs to be here in order to proceed with trial in the Brian Smith case. Before we resume questioning and or uh, playing of the recording, uh, I wanted to, it, it, we're doing a lot of sitting in this case, folks, and, and a lot of um, 
we're, we're having fairly long sessions of sitting. If any of you are experiencing any discomfort at all, please feel free to stand up or, or stretch as long as you can do it in a way that's non-disruptive and uh, doesn't block anybody's view. Please, please feel free to, um, to stretch or, or stand up if, you, if that'll help alleviate any discomfort. And um, so that's one topic I wanted to cover with you. Next, today I want to remind you again, we're, we're seeing a lot of evidence, but we're certainly not seeing all the evidence as of today. And, um, and it is part of your duty to, uh, as much as you can, keep an open mind until you've heard everything you need to hear. You're not to be talking about the case with anyone, especially, in, 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 not especially, including your fellow jurors, uh, because we do start to make up our minds at the point where we start talking about things. So that's a tool that you can use to not, to, to fulfill your, your duty and not make up your minds ahead of time. Um, don't be looking things up and don't, uh, and remember, if there is any anything improper that you observe, you you need to report that to the court. So, someday we don't have to repeat this trial. Thank you. We are ready to continue with this witness. I am judge. You know the breaks are very quick, but we see Detective Lee coming back into the into the room here. Has everybody just essentially taken a bathroom break? That's correct. Okay. And did you get some communication from a uh, trooper Chaffin on the break? Yes, we did. Okay. And he's going to testify hopefully later today, so I won't have you tell me what he told you. But did he report some statements the defendant had made while in the restroom? Yes, he did. Okay. Here's how it explains actually yeah, that one's first. This is a supplement to it. These are what we're going to be seizing. It's not much, like I said, it's a known DNA photographs that we close on the road. Ready to have your cell phone. Okay. Um, and then we're going to be taking your shoes um, and then you're going to be seizing your clothing once, once you get down to the jail. That way you can wear your clothes down there. Okay. Okay. Are you guys in a rush to go home? Are we in a rush? Yeah. You want to talk some more? We're not in a rush. We got. Oh, I have two days. I saw you do that. <laughs> you know what? I mean, um, that's what we do. We love to talk. Um, I'm telling the brother anyway. I picked up a very drunk girl. Uh, my wife was gone. She was away for the weekend. I have to go home. And um, I, I shot her. And um, I, I know you guys are doing good cop, bad cop. You, you, we're not really trying to do that. We're pretty good. <laughs> I say, I say we're not yeah, like, good. Yeah. Yeah, that, 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 that's what I, I can't understand you both trying to be good. Well, we are we are just good. We don't do that good cop. And, yeah. and I, I, I appreciate that. And everything you've done is I really appreciate that. Um, and, uh, I know I'm going to burn already, so, and, uh, I don't want you to waste your time. We appreciate that. Um, but yeah, so I shot this girl and then I, I went and dumped her out on that little side road going towards Butte. When you turn off the, uh, did they exclude the power plant? Yeah, around about that area now. Yeah. You must have found a... You may have. How long ago was that about? Not before. Two, three, maybe three years ago. Three years ago. It was a long time ago. Um, what time of year was it? It wasn't winter because it was green. Okay, yeah. So fall or spring, summer? I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, so, so I'm really sorry. When I say I don't know, I'm really young. Okay, I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. Sorry. I'm saying really good. I can believe that. It's yeah. been three years. Yeah. Um, yeah, my wife has gone. Uh, Do you remember where she went? 
No, but she usually goes to her um, hunting code, yeah. She usually goes and does it to the Orient. Oh. Yeah. Sorry, I speak English. <laughs> <laughs> America. So, so who do you, what um, can you tell us about this? For this girl was, uh, I'd also just gone to the safe way to go get something else. I was driving off. She was on the side there and she was, she actually seemed like a nice person. And, uh, uh, she, she wanted booze, I knew that. She was trying, she had a whole bottle of, of R&R on her there. And, uh, I think that's actually why I stopped because uh, I had some booze, but I didn't know if I had enough, so I went, you know. But that attracted me to her. Um, I, I picked up and I said, hey, you, you want some warm food and a warm place to sleep start? And she was like, yes, yeah, sure. And she, she jumped in, but she was, she was, she was really drunk. She was slurring it. And, uh, I took her home and she fell asleep on the, on the couch in front of the TV. And, um, she, uh, she, she, she was smelling. I, I knew she was homeless. And, you know, she was, she, she was thinking and I was getting upset and I said to her, go, go, go take a shower. You know, because now there's smell in the house, you know, she might have, Stephanie would smell that there was a homeless person in the house. <laughs> and uh, she wouldn't do it. She, she, she kept saying, no, no. And I was worried that she's going to bomb it now. But then I realized that she really had been drinking a lot. Uh, no excuse, but I, I'd also been drinking a, a, mm -hmm. a, a, a lot. Like I said, when Stephanie goes that. That's brine time. I can, or as you call it, brand time. Uh, I, I can let my hair down. I can just to relax and get mm -hmm. rid of all the stress I've been made all the time. And um, yeah, I don't know. I, 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 I tell you, remember this. Uh, and I, again, I'm not lying to you. I, I don't remember. I can't visualize this 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 girl. But um, I went to the garage and I got my little pistol there and I, I said to go to the go shower and she wouldn't she wouldn't she wouldn't and uh i just did that and i like I, I, while she was on the couch yeah i just did i just shot it like it, it, there was no the the, the messed up thing i can tell you honestly the, there was no emotion now that was just you're not listening to me go shower you're not I, I knew that the longer she stays here, the worse trouble I'm going to get in with Stephanie. Um, she's going to stink up the place if she vomits on the carpet. It's going to be, you know. And um, so, do you remember she was white, black, native? Oh, she was a native. She was a native. Yeah. Oh, all those people, they are natives. Do you remember how old she might have been? She was a little bit older. Again, I'm able to judge the ages because their skin is different to ours. So. Mm -hmm. They usually and they look a little older than they are if they're homeless. Probably. Yeah. What was your guess for them? mid forties? Yeah. Um, would you remember her hair length? Anything distinctive about her clothing she might have been wearing? No. No. Remember her name? No. No. Do you remember reading anything about any remains being found? No. And I actually didn't look. Okay, yeah. So, the, so actually, I did laugh to you guys. The, those pictures I showed when you showed them were the real ones. Um, of what? Of, of her. I, 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 did, I, did have, I did have a photo of me trying to stick my fingers into her. Yeah. yeah. So that was a real photo of you doing that to the person you shot? Was that before or after you shot her? After. Yeah. And uh, so I actually did show that to, to Alicia, but I deleted those photos. And From what? What were those photos on? Uh, they were on one of my old computers that I sold a long time ago already. About buying, you know, um, and I've replaced all my hard drives with faster hard drives now, so that, that hard drive. And um, Alicia and myself actually had a conversation. She she wanted me to prove, you know, that was the thing that I'm not prove it, bro, mm -hmm. prove it, you know. And uh, so I thought to myself, I'm going to do something I never do, and I'm going to undelete these things. And like I told you about the deleting, mm -hmm. the deleted purpose, and if you ever want to write something down, the computer looks for a place to write down, and all of those files 
there was like three or whatever. They'd, all, they'd been overwritten to the point where the, the rest of the picture was dead. It was messed up. Uh, it, just, it, it, it couldn't be recovered. So, um, so if, if we got you a, a computer with Google Maps or something on it, would you be able to and be willing to show us uh, yeah, okay. where, you, where you think you might have? Yeah, I'm going to show you from out there. We appreciate that. Um, so, do you, um, and you said your little pistol, what kind of pistol do you have? Oh, that's a little, you still have it? No, it's in my gun collection. Okay. How many guns do you have? Everybody in Alaska has lots of guns. Yeah. You think it was a 22? No, it's a little, it's a little green 22. It's a SGS 22. Okay. Um, in South Africa, when the, the, the blacks took over, the communists took over, um, one of the first things they did is they put in very strict gun control. Uh -huh. So very few whites have got guns. Uh -huh. And uh, all the, not being racist, but the, the blacks, mm -hmm. most of them uh, have got access to guns. You can actually go to a market on this and the dark in the black areas you can go buy a gun mm -hmm. and AK-47s and stuff. Um, during the 70s and 80s, though, everybody, including the, I know the CIA as well, we, we know about that, who were pumping AK-47s to South Africa, and all of those are sort of black. So, um, uh, the Nazis took over the country. Anyway, so, so no one's got guns in there, none of the whites got guns in there. So that's why they're, they're, they're all dying out there. They've all been killed. Um, you, you, you must have heard that there's a genocide going on. Anyway, mm -hmm. So when I got here, I said to myself that I will defend my family. You know, no, I, I will have a family. I believe in that. And, uh, and it, it scares me when these fake news politicians get, start, start talking about gun confiscation. Mm -hmm. you, you have to look at South Africa and you'll see why you Criminals can't be that many people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No doubt. No doubt. And so, this 22, the screen SGS that you still have in your gun collection, where's your gun collection at your house? Um, you go down the stairs, there's a, a little closet underneath uh, the stairs, and I made a little gun case there. And it's, in one, it's in a black pouch. It's either in a black pouch or it's in a brown bag, a leather bag, because I went shooting the other day. And I took uh, just pistols, so it might be in there. No, it's not there. It's, it's, it's in a, it's in a, a black, a, a couple of black. Um, so twenty two that might have not had an exit wound. Did it mess the couch up? Which couch? For upstairs, downstairs? No, downstairs. downstairs. No, no, they, they didn't. They, there was no downstairs exit. on the no. couch. The same couch you have now. Yeah. And, and didn't, so no exit wound. Yeah, there was there was no exit wound. There was blood coming out. I put a, a, a towel over there. Um, uh, where, where did you hit her at? On the front yeah, temple. Yeah. And, uh, Left on the right side? On, on the side. On her left side. And that was, you know, when you, you guys kept talking about me gloating and um, I'm seeing that, I'm realizing that about myself. Um, it was like a movie scene. Yeah. In my eyes, it was like I was in a movie. Well, you know, and honestly, that's what that's what we're watching on that thing. I mean, it's like you're narrating an event that's happening and yeah. and and living as it, as the moment's going on. And so, this where did you pick? This was at Cars Gamble where you picked her up, or at the Safeway? Yeah, yeah, the Cars Gamble. Yeah. Safeway. Yeah. Okay. So, um, when you guys mentioned the fact me not wanting to do anything else, you know. Not having to wake up with funny things in my cars. I, I feel very guilty about that girl, that lady. She was a sweet lady, she was nice. The only this, thing, this lady, yeah, yeah. all she did to me was make my nice thing. I wouldn't go to the shower and yeah. I told her to. Um, I was going to grab her clothes, put in the washing machine, and it would be dry out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so. Uh, so Uh, is a, a tough book 
I'm not sure. I think so. Okay, so it was you're about to go into this view. Oh, okay. This is um, not so easy to see. But um, basically, it's a long yes. In the middle part, yeah, I would say it's. Is it the power factory? Yeah, the yes. hydroelectric project. Yeah. So you keep going past it as it's on your left. So it was. wasn't so far in. But was that side of the road. There was just a little entrance going in. And if you're coming from this side, the little entrance is, yeah, then within a few feet, the, the armco barrier starts. Uh, the, the metal barriers. Okay. You also call them armco. So as you're coming back this way, it's on your right as you're describing, and then the right before the barrier starts. Yeah. So it's... And of course, <laughs> you'd be surprised. Maybe I'm freaking America's dumbest criminals. <laughs> it's so early. It's got to be so early. I feel better. I feel lucky. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm just wanting to tell you about this. Um, Man, it's over here somewhere. I'll... But it's basically almost like this road turns a little bit, mm -hmm. and then there's a little. <laughs> but, okay, um, I don't know. <laughs> you know. He's not specific about it's where it is. Somewhere around this. I, I know there weren't houses very close by. Weren't houses? So this yeah. is a bit Twin Peaks Drive. You think it was before that? Very good chance. Um, I did. I could believe it. Because I was boasting to her too. I was boasting to her. And, uh, um, but I, I knew, but this is like a year after the two years. Um, I you knew, took her there about a year after. Yeah. After. I knew, I knew it wasn't there. Uh, I, I knew, I knew that the person wasn't there because I had driven past a few times. I, I, um, and um, from the road, I could, see, see, I could see that what I covered with was not there anymore. Okay, so, so somebody had found it. So that, yeah, that's why I know you guys were supposed to Somebody found the remains before you took a leash out there a year later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you remember when you were out there and noticed that, that it was I, found? I think I, I, I actually went past a few months later, like three, four months afterwards. Okay, and so you took a leash out there would have been in... So this, time, you know, this time of year, maybe in, in 18? August, July, August of 18? Yeah, I remember this time, yeah, because it wasn't, it wasn't, it was, it was close to, yes, she left in August. <laughs> so it was, this whole thing of ours was like, because we knew we leave each she's leaving and stuff, so the our whole thing got presented the month before August. So, so can, can you, know, just for time frame, can you tell me where you were working when this happened? You said three years ago, so we're looking at 2016. Can you tell yeah. me where you were working? I was working at Dow Engineering. And what, what time frame did you work for them? I was there from... I got here in 2014. The end of March 2014. I waited eight months to get my social security number and a work permit. So eight months after March. Then I worked for six months, almost six months exactly, because I, I was just eligible for an employment. I worked for Alaska Tire Services, ATS. Okay. And one of the ladies there, her father worked at Dell, and he saw me that I was a, I was older than everybody else. I think I was like in their twenties, and yeah, I'm like in my forties, and. Um, 
also, the, the, I started off there, and like within like a month, they promoted me up. Adele. Uh, 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 this is at the time. Oh, so the, the fact that I was quickly promoted showed that I wasn't just a normal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so then you went. To, you worked there six months, and then you went to work for Dow. Yeah, and yeah, then I went to work for Dow. I think I started at Dow about July fifteen, then June, July two thousand fifteen. Okay. So it was. It would have been. I was at, I was at Dow for like two and a half years or something. Yeah, kind of like, so it, was, so it would have been in that time frame that I was with Dell that this happened. Okay. So you you haven't found somebody there. That does, that, does it mean an animal could have taken that, that would have been troopers and I, I know we have found remains in that area. Okay. Yeah. And I, I don't know whether it's her or not, but I know that we there's been remains found in that area. I, I've got a funny feeling I was in, in, in my mind, my memory is that they found it very quickly. You know, it was like very soon. You were going hearing it on the news, or how did you? No, no, no. There was nothing on the news, and and that's what I, um, I, I know. Well, I, I, I know that sometimes if something bad happens, but you drove by it, and yes, within three months or so, that it wasn't there. You think? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm sure it was within a few days. I found it. Was it? Was there ever snow over her, or was it? No, 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 no. So it was never. It, she never. She was never there through a winter. Well, I. I don't know because once I knew there was, once I read out, I thought to myself there was nothing there. I never went to check again. Okay. Um, because they, they, that's how they catch you. They'll put cameras up and wait for you to come back and, you know, so. so I'll, we'll, I'll we'll see it on your Google. We'll see it on your phone or your GPS. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so in my mind, I was. Going to well, I don't know. I was uh, Alicia and I were doing our little jokes about things, um, and uh, this instant, yeah, my little private joke in my head was that I actually took her to a real site, and but uh, we both, well, she thought we were, that we were both joking about it, you know, because like I said, we were joking about it. You know? But she made up the other part about where it happened and that, that kind of stuff. Yeah, all, all that stuff I made up. It was, she, it was um, this just happened to be real, you know. Um, I'm just curious too. Then, when so when you had her pick, when when you had her in your house, there did you have your? Always, did you have a gun handy? Did you have to go get the gun to come back and oh, shoot her, or did you? It was, a, it was in the garage. So you had to go to the garage, yeah. get the gun, and come back. And back then, I kept the guns in the garage, I was cleaning them and whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, I always thought to myself, you know, during summer, I leave my truck outside in the driveway. Mm -hmm. And we already had people breaking into our vehicles. Um, just behind where I stay, there's a bird sanctuary and there's lots of homeless people there. And they keep walking through, breaking into cars, stealing mail. So I made a, that's why finally I made a gun case for us, a little spray case. And that's what I, I just finished making it like a month ago. So when you and got the gun and came back, did you say, get in the shower? Did you like threaten her with the gun to get in the shower? And she refused, or did you just come back and shoot her because she wasn't getting in the shower? No, I, I, I told her to go shower. Did yeah. she see that you had a gun? No. She was lying and looking at the TV. Okay. Um, she was just drunk out of her mind as well, probably. You know? um, so, yeah. Um, that was unprovoked. She didn't, she didn't leave me, didn't hurt me, didn't do anything. It was, she just pissed me off, you know. But this other one I don't know. I can't, I don't know why. I don't know. You mean, you, you mean, the, you, you remember and don't know why, or you still don't remember? I, I don't know why. I took this, this new girl. I don't know. But so, do you remember it and you just don't know why? Or at least, are you no, still alive? I, I don't remember. I, I don't remember. I'm, I'm, I'm serious. I'm trying to bring the pictures into my head and I can't. Because what you did with this first gal three years ago is cold blooded. But, yeah, that's what's, but, it's, but what you did with this girl was, was pretty calculated and. and <laughs> that's why much worse than just shooting something yeah. that didn't know they were going to get shot that, yeah and, and that, made it, that, that is why I thought I must tell you so you can understand 
like you were saying, it's, it's, it's not your first time. It, it, it wasn't the first time, but you know, I, I, I was used to. So it came pretty easy to you. Yeah, totally, yeah. mm. Well, once you've once you've seen a dead person, you you after that, I, honestly, I, 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 I my, my um, I've always been a little bit shy and a little bit insecure. Um, because I'm short as well, you know, short guys always get bumped around. And I, <laughs> but after that, um, I started not being scared of people. Um, it's like, I can do it. You got to be confident. Yeah, you, to, to don't bite me, don't piss me off. I, 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 I know what I'm capable of doing. And, I, and we, um, I've, all, I've always wondered, when, when I was in the military, um, in South Africa? Yeah. Look, 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 this was 80, 88 to 89, or 89 until 1990. Uh, a lot of the guys were always scared to become infantry because um, a lot of guys would go to the bush, but they would never come back. You know, yeah, you call it post traumatic stress, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I had, I had wondered. You know, how would I react if I do shoot an intruder or something? If I do actually have blood on my hands, mm-hmm. and that answered the question. You know, I, don't, I, I could do it. The, 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 the pictures of this, this new girl gross me out, um, um, but I, I know I can. I could touch it in too. Mm-hmm. Without that, we, this girl a couple of years ago, when you after you shot her, you said you put a towel against her head. She didn't have an exit wound, but she had some blood coming out of the side of her head. What did you? How did you get her out of the house? How did you get her out there? I was picked up. Did you put a towel or anything? Yeah, I put a towel on her head. Nothing else. No tarp. No blankets. No nothing like that. What did you leave out there with her? Did you leave a towel out there with her? I probably did. No. No, I didn't. I didn't see the towel. I put her in a black bag, a black plastic bag. Like a garbage bag? Yeah. And then you said you could see it, like where you see it. What could you see? Yeah, so so when I left, as I drove out again, because I, I basically backed up in there and just uh, when I left and I looked back, I could see from the road, I could see the black bag. Oh, okay. So that's why. Like I, a trash bag. Yeah. So I don't think I left the the towel. It was a towel that had been linked to me. Yeah. So uh, I, I don't, I don't. And, the, and these were just normal black bags that you could get anyway. So. And she left the, you left the clothes on. She had our clothes and everything on. Yeah. Naked? Yeah. Okay. What did you do with the clothes? Um, As I was driving, I, whenever there was a, Clear spot. I would throw them out oh, to, to, to distribute them so that yeah, they weren't we're right the found back. in one thing. Because if you, if you find a full layer of clothing in one spot, it's going to be suspicious. On the way out or on the way back? Um, on the way out. I was, you know, a shoe out here and a shoe out. And did they wear what vehicle did you have the same time? Yeah. So did it have a canopy on it or a top around it? No. So did you see this in the open bed of the truck in a garden thing? Yeah. So. And that, that was also like. Oh, like three o'clock in the morning or something like when that. When you took her out. Yeah, it was, it was early. So um, I know if you're driving that road at that, like 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, the police are out because they know there's all the drunk cars driving around. So um, I was also scared, like, get rid of this person as quickly as possible. Otherwise, I, um, I was scared I wouldn't know what to do with it, you know, with it. So, um, that's why I drove out that late. I, mean, I was falling asleep while I was driving. And so that's how tired I was, you know. Did, did you tell anybody else? I mean, I know you told Alicia, but she thought it was fake. Yeah. Did you tell anybody else about that? No, because that's dangerous. So do you have, and I know you had it, and you said your first coverage your deleted stuff. Is there, do you have some type of bad picture file, some type of ball, some type of something with, with these... Well, that no. Um, I did because I wanted to prove to Alicia um, that I actually did 
Um, you know, so, so I actually did, I, I, I found them. I, I found them on the computer. And because we've been talking about it, I went and showed it. I said, yeah, this is this was it. But um, I deleted them because I was, I was scared. I deleted the things. And I then did what I told you. I restarted the computer a few times. Okay. And then started clearing off and deleting a lot of stuff. Um, you know, what you really want to do, if you really want to clear after you've deleted, is to load a whole lot of big things on to make sure you go past that section that you because if you over. Yeah. You know, if, if this is your entire hard drive, that file might be here, but there's a lot of other blank spaces here really. So it falls up there first and that file yeah. still stays open. So you want to put a whole lot on and then delete. How long was this woman at your house before you killed her picked up your Paris Campbell? Oh, we were back into us probably about an hour. Um, no sex. No. We 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 talked a bit, but then she was like really she was like out of it as well. So um yeah, we couldn't have done anything. Yeah. So yeah, so that's why I put my fingers inside there. You know, just your fingers or did you fist her? Well, that much. Okay. Yeah. And that was when she was deceased, yeah. Was there any cleanup at your house? And blood on the floor? You might have already asked this, but any blood on the couch or floor or anything you had to? Oh, no, no, no. Right no, no, no there was a bed on the floor. Is that a carpeted floor or is it? A, yeah, it's carpeted. Yeah, same carpet. Yeah, yeah. same carpet. Yeah. And I, I did go and Google that if you throw hydrogen um, peroxide on it, it'll clear it up. Doesn't it, does it stay in the carpet though? Doesn't it leach the carpet? I didn't it. Well, some carpets it does some of that. So I I test it on a little corner and didn't stay in. So was it completely you look at it now, would you not see oh, it? Same thing. Yeah. yeah. And I, and and the the um the hydrogen peroxide destroy all I believe it destroys so if you spray that stuff on it doesn't show anything. Because good that stuff is actually made up of hydrogen peroxide with this Is the has the is the couch in the same place it was then? Or has it been? Uh, it's just one of the same place. But yeah. Would you mind drawing a diagram of the, that room where the couch is at and where you think where the stain was? Okay, so, bottom of the house looks like that. Yeah. Um, this is a little bar. Here's the TV. Here's the couch. So she was lying, yeah. Which end was her head on? The head was on the end. And so the, the stains on the TV side or on this side? Well, it'll be. I don't think there's any stains on the couch. If you find stains, they'll be on the floor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm still on this native female. I mean, it may be in her mid 40s. Does she have black hair? Does she have short hair, long hair? I, I can't. I can't remember. I'm trying to picture it in my mind. I can't. I can't remember. It's actually dark downstairs. We've got like is it, usually I'll just have the TV on and no other lights. So the first good look I would have had is when she was inside. And I still told her when we were driving in, like duck down, you know, so that the neighbors don't see you. Didn't notice anything. Good teeth, bad teeth. Um, I'm sorry, I can't I can't. <laughs> she was older and she was nice. That's all I can tell you. Um, if she had short hair, I would specifically have remembered that. But yeah, it's, what, what made you? Is that something that we're going to find, or is that what made you decide that you wanted to talk about that? Is that something that, that we're going to find evidence of, or is that something that? What, what, well, um, I I appreciate it. I mean, I yeah, think we suspected it, and we were hoping that it would be at some point in time. But yeah, I, I, I thought it was a living. Yeah, it's, it's you've been nice to me. I'm, I thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm already. You can't undo that. Yeah, I, I, I'm already going to jail for the rest of my fucking life. So, um, one more thing isn't going to hurt me, you know. Um, I was worried, you know, but, you know, yeah. Let's, you know, let's close another chapter, another family that can just. Well, so we, hopefully we'll be able to figure this out. Yeah.
I appreciate that. And you would follow that and you can tell us all that. We are going to be able to bring some closure to this family, but I still think that there's going to be a little bit of unanswered questions about this gal at the, at the Marriott leaving it the way it's been left. And I, and I know that you're struggling with that. And I know that you're doing the best you can. And I appreciate that. And I, I'm just, I'm struggling with a little bit to understand it. And so I know that, the, that their family's got it. Um, I'm glad that you have that in you, the good Brian or whatever, that you have that feeling in you to, to bring some kind of closure to this person's family. And um, I'd like to get there with the, with the other gal, but, but if what we have is what we have, then, then that's good. Well, what I can tell you is that there's something wrong with me. I mean, it's obviously it's a second time. So that's, there's something wrong with me, and that's, that's why I did it. You know that. So you don't you you're struggling with that internally. You you believe that there's something wrong with you that 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 you could do this, and so you're struggling with. You know, it's, it's, I mean, this is not normal behavior. This, you know. Um, well, when I got to America, a lot, a lot of my in in South Africa, my anger was channeled at survival. Uh, and you have to have anger uh, at what happened there. But, um, the rape in South Africa, the, 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 the statistics are one in four women will be raped. And it's, it's not just one in four women will be raped, it's one in four women will be raped at least once. Mm -hmm. You know, it's because if you're living in an area where you can get raped, you'll get raped again. Mm -hmm. And I've got my mom. And my two sisters and a, and a stepsister. Statistically, every time the phone rings, it's like, which one of them is it? You know. So, you, but your anger is at, at survival there. When I got here, I still had anger inside me from that, but I didn't have to channel it at um, survival anymore because. This is an amazing country. It's, it's, you don't have to fight to survive. Uh, not in that way. You know? um, so, yeah, I don't know where I was going with that, but I, the, the, the only what I got from that was with Alicia, where, like I said, um, she was making up stories, I was making up stories, and then I came up with a real story. How little did I, she, and she didn't know, but, uh, yeah. but, but you did. Yeah, so, so, so that was the only, you know, it, it was a huge adrenaline rush taking her out there. And I still, we still walked down into the little, you, you walk down, you know, the, the, the road actually goes straight down, and there's a, a little parking lot, you can see where people are back in there to turn around, and it's there where uh, I dropped her. And we actually walked in and I, I, I took a leak there. I still thought, you know, I'm taking a pee in a place where I promised I would never go again because police are going to have cameras up here. That give you a little bit of a drive on there? Well, the, the, the adrenaline came from me taking her there and uh, me proving that I was better than her. You know, all of her stories about the so bullshit. The, the bullshit, yeah. Um, she, uh, but you're recording it. You probably are. Mm -hmm. but, um, she made up some bullshit story about that she went and killed somebody and threw them in the water. And she went back like two days later and it was all like petrified and I mean, uh, putrefied, like her person had decomposed and whatever. And you know, that doesn't really happen. Yeah, that's bullshit. You know? I saw a uh, very interesting thing many, many years ago. Uh, yeah, in America somewhere, there's like, like a little forest where. They take cadavers and they put them out in different positions and then they, 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 they monitor how long it takes to decompose under natural conditions. And, uh, you know, if it's very dry, that uh, doesn't really decompose. And the, one of the things they did, they actually poked holes in one of the cadavers and that uh, rotted away much quicker because now the little insects had entrance holes. Because usually they just have the nose and the, the anus and the eyes to go in. So, um, yeah, so if you ever want to get someone to decompose quickly, then that's how you do it. So, Can I ask you, did you do that on this last girl? No. 
No, no, I don't. She was naked and I dumped her down there. So oh, dumb and run. Yeah, yeah. Um, I still fuck close to the back room. It is. Um, how close to the how, how far did you go over the garden? How far do you think she went down that embankment? Yeah, just maybe yeah. four feet. Yeah, it was steep. I, I was hoping she would go down further, but she didn't. Yeah, she's stuck there. Um, and that's why I knew anyone walking past should see this, you know. Were you surprised it wasn't until October? I, I, I was. I was like, what the hell? It, does nobody go there? Um, so, were you getting more hopeful then that at least it, it's not been that long? And I don't know. Like I said, I, I, I knew, I, I, in the back of my mind, I knew so I, I don't think I don't know. Something that would never leave your mind. That, that, for a month, that was just. I, I, I am, I, I am in denial about this. This is the second one. I, I am in denial. I can tell you that because it's much worse than. Yeah, that I, I don't want to believe that I can do something like that. I, I know, and, and that's why I can't see it in my head. But you've pro progressed from just shooting somebody to essentially torturing them before you kill them. Yeah, and that's. There's no way to come back from that. There's no way. Well, not that. personally, even. There's, you know, there's no way I can in any, any way come back from that. Um, it's not a normal person that. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not temporarily insane. I'm not. I'm not anything like that. I'm, I'm, I am saying I know exactly what I do. But um, yeah, I've gone too far. I don't, I don't want to go on. Are you glad that? I'm not glad. I'm... You're glad you're not going to be able to hurt anybody else? Yeah. But I was also, I was hoping that it would have just been that one. I was hoping that that anger in my system would have been out. You know, I, I, that's what I was, in my mind, I thought maybe that's why I shot well, you know? Just for curiosity, I know you said your wife maybe went to scissor her hand and go the eyes or something. Was it at that period of time, was there some issues with you and your wife? Were you angry about something? Was there, no. did you have a fight when she had left? Or? We've actually always been having a little bit of disagreements. Um, like I said, I love, she's, a, she's an amazing, amazing woman. So and if you go to the gun and decide you're going to shoot this one? Yeah. Right. I uh, yeah I don't know I don't know if I just wanted to do a Hollywood moment there or just be anything about this these particular type of people is it is, does he have something that against native women I've, I've asked myself that question is it a, is it a racial thing and it's no I, uh, it's, it's they, happen, to, they happen to be indigenous people they happen to be easy and the, the, they make up ninety percent of the ninety nine percent of the homeless people so well. Used to. There's a, a large influx coming in now. Mm -hmm. I've heard from some of the guests at the hotel that um, some of these sanctuary cities are actually, because we were trying to explain that, how do all these people get in here? And the guy I spoke to is actually from Hawaii. And I said, how the hell do you get homeless people in? Do they like swim across? And he was explaining that these sanctuary cities do. To get rid of people, the homeless people, they buy them airplane tickets to Alaska and to Hawaii. And that's why Hawaii suddenly got a homeless issue. And, and I've seen on the streets here, I know you, you guys have shut down the homeless things that side of town, and that's why they moved up here. Um, but yeah, I've seen a lot of, you know, yeah. that they, they, they've been flown in here. So, so that night, three years ago, when you went and you picked up this gal at Safeway, did you know you were going to take her home and kill her? No. The, the, to be honest, yeah, I, I, I think I was just looking for some more booze. You know, some, she's got drinks and, you know. Similar to that, of the events of September 4th, you went out looking for a girl just like you do on all nights, but yeah. you didn't intend on and be killing somebody. Yeah. And what made me angry with her was that she was smelling and it was, mm -hmm. yeah. And I, I think I actually said to her, oh, I must take you home. You know, and she was like, "No, no, let's see." Why do you think that? Why do you think that you remember something pretty vividly from three years ago? Um, but you, you, uh, 
Because uh, somehow, so somehow you've uh, blocked this part of your memory out for right, the time being. Because it's going to come back to you. It just. I don't know. I, I, I am. I don't want to believe I did that. That badly. If you just told me I snapped the neck and walked away, I'd say, yeah, probably did that easily, you know? That's. So long that he's, that he's doing something for that long, he's like, you know, he's, uh, I, 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 I can't, I can't get my brain around that. So, okay. The gun you used, what kind of gun was it? Uh, it's one, oh, you already got I got it. a 22 SDS green in, a, in his gun collection. Here's asked, there were some pictures. You had some pictures of the handgun on, on your Google Google Drive. Was it? Or do you have multiple guns? Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, okay. The, these should be two on the Google Drive. There's a little uh, Celtic AT380. Yeah, that's the one I saw, yeah. Um, the rubbish gun, I got it at Alaska, USA, I got it US cash, cash USA, whatever. If uh, I have some photos, you might recognize this person from three years ago if you saw a photo of her. And I'm not saying we have a photo of her because I don't know if we do, but we have some possible. Do you, mind looking at them? Yeah. you think you're going to recognize her if you see her? Is I think that's a she was, she was an older lady. I've got a funny feeling that's okay. So she was a little bit chubby as well. And what and what makes you say that? I mean, you said she looks a little older. You haven't seen any other photos, but uh, uh, that person looks. It's a look in her eyes and her mouth. That looks familiar to me. In my mind, when I'm trying to remember, this is the picture that came to my mind. Yeah. Um, I did look at uh, yeah, but... oh no 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 no. no. That's fine. Yeah. How how certain are you? Zero to one hundred percent. How certain are you that that might be the person? And I know it's been three years, and I've only shown you three photos. But there's probably more missing people, but I'm almost. Sure, because I felt like a funny feeling inside of me. Like, you know, like, like you wouldn't forget that face. That, yeah. <laughs> so I, I, feel, I feel guilty that, that, that she, she really was an artist. She, 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 was, she did nothing wrong to me. Except. Did, did so, this other guy do something to you? My chest was sore. She must have hit me. She must have. I'm, I'm still blocking out. I don't, I don't, I promise you, I'll tell you if the memories come back. Uh, I, I believe you. Yeah, I believe you. But I, 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 I'm trying to picture it in my head. The picture's coming to my head are from your pictures. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to, not that, from a different angle. You know? mm -hmm. um, I'm, sort of how my memory works. So I, I, I can look at something and then I can bring it up later on to the bit of the game. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, So now that we've talked about uh, the other person, are we done there? Yeah, I hope so. No, no, don't need it. Okay. Well, I mean, uh, that's kind of a weird answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's uh, basically. Is there anything else that uh, you just? I mean, obviously, that probably feels good. Like you said, now there's no more looking over your shoulder. There's no more of that hell. Yeah. Oh, is there yeah. anything else you want to talk about or anything? Um, that we should be uh, looking for. So the night this of this event on the four, when or the six, is that when it was eighty eight? Where, so where did you go after you dumped the stuff in the dumpster? Where did you end up? Where did you sleep the night? Did you go home? No, I went back home again. Yeah, but, um, I was basically sitting downstairs. Um, the, Stephanie sleeps upstairs. I sleep downstairs. Um, I snore loud, and that's how we started sleeping separately. Um, and she got a seatback machine, so. To help her sleep better, so we we've been yeah. sleeping separately for the last year. So um, mm -hmm. I'm sitting downstairs and I'm watching TV till like midnight, and then I can hear her snoring softly upstairs. Then I know she's gone, and then 
Yes. And who was that person? Um, FBI name name Mr. Elliot Mr. Peterson. Yes, yeah, Elliot Peterson. Yeah. Okay. And was he a cyber crimes type guy for the FBI? Yes, he was. Okay. And did he talk to Mr. Smith for kind of a long time about about computers and yes. SD cards and thumb drives and the internet? Yes, he did a long time. Okay. And much of that has been cut from this interview. But were you all still watching? Yes. during that portion yes okay yeah, so that's your plan you're going to keep walking out anytime you want more information from the day it worked last time i'm sorry i'm wasting more time <laughs> Being as good as I can. Yeah, I'm just going to say, I'm really happy. Let me see what you do. Don't mind if I take notes. Are you the Hunty guy? Yes. Oh, the bucket. Yeah, yeah, and I saw on your resume you are too. Yeah, well, well, usually they were little websites. Yeah. The, 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 Which, do you, do you remember the websites? The, well, the, uh, this band, oh, well, um, Randy Phillips. Um, He's like my relaxed side. Yeah. My real Facebook is uh, where my wife and her friends. Right. Now it's going to be my ex wife. And her friends, um, all friends there, and they yeah. are like all pretty and nice. And, yeah. Um, all of her friends are all like me, Democrat. So yeah. Brandy, he's a Trump supporter. Yeah. And, uh, Racist, EK. And you just yeah, everyone. They have to say whatever I want to. So yeah. if you do good friends, he's yeah, got bad friends, and you know, it's, a, yeah. it's it's nice to have that, and it's not linked to you, so no one can fight you. And yeah. Ro, the R O E on that, he's the same thing. He's uh, what he's turned into. Uh, initially, all the other Facebooks I had, there's, there's nothing sinister about them. All the other ones were actually. Um, a game that I was playing called Realm of Empires. Uh, oh, no, I just, like I said, for you, I mean, fascinating, right? Because, I mean, you've got, you just, you're a smart guy, and you've got this IT background, and, you know, so it's just interesting then the intersection with the videos. I uh, was just curious, like, is there an audience for this? Were you sharing this stuff? You well, know, were people, like, I mean, one of the questions I had in my head is just, did somebody ask you to do this, right? Because oh, yeah. trying to reconcile, like, Brian, you know, Bradley, like, were there people asking you to, to go produce videos like this? Well, uh, these are whips are called, um, oh my goodness, I've forgotten it. But it's a funny name, like a great grizzly name, like a, 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 when you hear the name, you know it's bad. Um, it's not rotten.com, that's something else. Um, anyway, there the, the is a website that actually shows dead people mm -hmm. and it's shot all the time. And I've got to look at a, a, a friend of mine, she liked that and she told me to go look at this. And, was this uh, Alicia or somebody else? Yeah, it was Alicia. Okay. And um, but it was it e bombs world or something? No, that might have been an old one. It's um uh, 
Oh, my God. But you know, when I look at those pictures, they, they, they close me out. I want to vomit when I see right. blood. And I, yeah, oh, yeah. You, you might not believe me when I, from what I've done, but um, yeah, so I, I've never liked it. But she liked um, suffocation. Okay. So um, on the I was looking through and um, I found a, a video of a girl on a bed like this with yeah. a latex thing over it. Yeah. And they, they, they suck the air out. And yeah, yeah, the vacuum ones, yeah. yeah. So um, you might find, I might have downloaded that and put it on my computer. Um, and so I've been to that website to see that kind of stuff. Right. So, so people, there the are places where people can put things up, but I have guys done. Well, did you, I mean, who, like the, the videos and pictures you take, I mean, who, who uh, Alicia, who else did you show those to? Well, I showed Alicia some pictures of something that, um, uh, I, I, it, it was real pictures I showed you, but, yep. um, she thought I was joking. Yeah. Her and I we were joking about the whole killing people kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it was a we were just like it, it, was, it was like a little fantasy thing. Yeah, yeah. Know? And th that came about with the suffocation thing, and that's how I found out that she liked the suffocation. Well, she, she liked the suff suffocation being that turned her on, basically. Right. Um, and it was just a coincidence that those little little pictures I showed you were actually real yeah you know um uh, she thought she thought i was lying right um, and i was doing my best to try and but, but i was actually talking about something else i, I was yeah, making yeah. up to you know, kill lots of people and she was making up but she's killed lots of people but it was just a yeah, yeah, yeah. and it was, uh, you know, it was just going through it and i actually found these pictures on my computer yeah and i thought i deleted them yeah and I showed her and I went home and I believe the heck out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I still explained to those guys how to if you want if you delete something, how to permanently get rid of it. Okay, what you tell them? Yeah. Well you, you know basically like the, the, the file doesn't get deleted. Mm -hmm. It's just the file name becomes an invalid name. Right. So that's why your your um your undelete software will just go in and find invalid names and see okay what's in these clusters. Yep. And oh there we go, he has a video or photo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you do want to like really delete something, um, uh, after you've deleted it, uh, write more information onto the hard drive. Right. Write over that now, and that way you'll okay. You know. So that little hard drive that I found those three pictures on. What were the I'm sorry? What were the pictures on that you showed her? Oh, it was just like a girl um, mm -hmm. with my hand sticking yeah. in the little girl's vagina. Yeah. You know? And uh, I think a picture of a boob was something like it. Okay. Um, you, you, you couldn't even see that it was a dead person. Right. Um, so. Uh, were those from Alaska or were those from somewhere else? No, this was um, uh, another girl I uh, met about three years ago. Okay. Yeah. And I'm sorry, I'm not trying to cover. Did you already explain it all? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah oh, great, great. Um, uh, anyway, so, yeah, that's. Are there are there more pictures like that that we can go find? Like what's no, I've, I've, I was actually surprised when I found those. Yeah, um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how those slipped through the system, but uh, um, I I have been known to go out and pick up girls. And, right. And, uh, so one of the girls on on your profile, most of them are Alicia. Okay. Um, but another one. There's a girl, there's one of the girls I picked up and while we were shaving, I just uh, grabbed my phone video of it, you know. Um, and other girls are also, so yeah. you, you'll find videos of me and girl. I, I, did, I did initially withhold something from them. Because, okay. Uh, and that, that was the first girl that I dealt with. That, 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 that's a picture that we shared. Did you tell them about it eventually? Yeah, no, no, yeah, but they, they know you've got it off. They told them all that stuff. How did you meet her originally? Oh, we used to work together. Okay. Yeah. And a uh, uh, very nice girl. Yeah. But very promiscuous. And yeah. that's how we uh, got involved with it. Right. Yeah. Okay. But, I mean, you never heard of her. <laughs> non consensually, right? Yeah. Was just, uh, we had a little thing. Um, for every time, for every two times she saps me, I sap her once. I didn't tell her. Sorry, I forgot yeah. to tell her about that. But she would, 
she, she did like it. They know that uh, she likes suffocation, right? Yeah. Like me holding my hands on her throat, yeah, yeah. Uh, or blocking her mouth, right? You know, but she also liked if you stick a dick in her throat, then it goes down, and then she can't breathe. She would, she, she got off on that, <laughs> you know. Um, and, and that's where her and I got to this whole thing about, um. We would start joking about kidding people. Mm -hmm. You know, she was like, she's done this and I've like, I've done this. And right. just coincidentally, one of the stories I told her was like a real one, you know. Yeah. Um, but I told her like, oh, it was half of it. I yeah, yeah. cameraized it, and, you know. Right. It, it, it was a, a messed up little fantasy that I had. It's, um, I know now when I think back, I'm like, oh my God, that anyone hearing about it is going to think it's crazy. Right. Well, you know, so I, like I said, I, I do the IT stuff, I'm really fascinated. I do know that, you know, all they do all day is try to sort of put together, like, mm -hmm. who's missing, who's dead, you know, what do we know? So if there's anything you can think of or concrete details or identifications you can do for them, I mean, you know, they're, they're doing the same thing you'd want them to do. They're out there trying to kind of put people back and let families know. And, um, so, I mean, I, I assume they're still here. I bet they'd still love to talk to you if there's anything else that you can think of about any of these incidents or remember. Because I get it, right? I mean, I get that some of this is uh, maybe hard to recall, but those details do everything to make their, to make, you know, and like I said, they're, this is as good as it gets for us to sit down and talk to them. It's not lying to us that's, that's you know, that, that sort of understands the relationship, that, that's happy to share and teach, which that doesn't happen that often. Yeah, you know, but if um, I wouldn't be doing that if I wasn't taught, so I'm still a bad person, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, you've done bad things, right? Do you think yeah. that makes you a bad person? Yes. Have you done good things? Yeah, yes, but the, um, the Hitler built up the economy of Germany and he took unemployment to zero. And he, Gave everybody a lot of money, but he killed a bunch of people. So right. is he good or bad? You tell him. Um, do you remember how long later it was that you went and put her by the railroad tracks? It was two days later. Two days later. Why did you pick there? Um, well, I often drive out that way. Um, it's, it's a beautiful drive. Oh, it's gorgeous. And uh, do you in South Africa or other places like that where you kind of get the mountains and the ocean and right next to each other? Oh. Yeah, yeah, it's actually if you go close to Cape Town, mm -hmm. um, the, the, the actual table baits, or table baits, this big circle, and the one side of it, the, there's like a flat four, like this, of gee, like 50 meters. That's huh. uh, 50 times 350 feet. Uh, feet, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, it's like amazing. I've actually, a friend and I took a drive down, and like, I live much further far away. And we actually sat on like ledges, like at 150 feet down, fishing in the water. And, yeah. And then we both suddenly realized, what if a big fish bite gets pulled out? So, <laughs> but yeah, it's a beautiful place. Yeah. It's a South Africa. It's, it's a beautiful country. It's, 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 a, it's a pity about the, what's happening in the country. But uh, um, yeah, the, 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 the racism against the whites is based on a lie. Right. And it's a lie that was pushed forward by foreign governments and foreign media. CNN, and when Donald Trump talks about fake news, I know exactly where he's coming from. But, uh, but it's the CNN and all these places are lie, blatant lies about South Africa. And like I said, even the politicians. Right. Um, you, you, but you were saying you, you drove that a lot, so that's... Oh, yeah, this year, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so, so I'm, I'm familiar with it. I know there's lots of little stops there. Uh, uh, often when I was just wanted to get away from the wire, uh, I would go buy a big can of bikes or whatever and uh, just drive out and go park there and sit and yeah. see if I can see a balloon or two. So yeah, I'm sort of familiar with the area. Yeah. And I remember that it goes down and you could probably throw something down there. And I was just panicking, I just wanted to get rid of this, uh, this, this boy, you know, this lady. Mm -hmm. So. What was interesting to me is that you stopped to take pictures of her on a tailgate. Yeah. Do you know why? A taste. It doesn't make sense. All I could think is that I was gloating about it. Yeah. Or that I 
well, to just record it that I could, because it's not often that you do something like it. So right. it's something just for me to remember. But I, I somebody hinted that maybe I just wanted to be caught. Do you think that's true? That's it might be. Um, if I thought that uh, there was no way I could stop myself, then I would say, yeah. Um, Did you tell him how many times you've done this before? Yeah, this has been twice. The, the, the first one, the first time, I don't know what the hell I did. I, I shot a girl in the head and I, I just, uh, I wasn't even angry or anything like that. Um, she just pissed me off a little bit, but, you know, and uh, I thought it would never ever happen again. And I kept quiet about it. And then uh, with Alicia, who and I used to like try and one up each other all the time on um, uh, on things, you know, but the, the, who had the toughest life and who just began better. And um, so the, the one day, uh, I can't remember who one was it. One of us said, oh, well, I've killed somebody. You know, you know obviously, um, there's nothing, you know. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know why I did this first girl that I shot. It was, then I can remember sort of clearly. Um, I just, she was lying on the, on the couch and she, she didn't want, want to go shower. She was smelling of a bed and I, I kept telling her to put a shower, you know, you, you stink. And I just went to the garage and got my gun and I shot her in the head. It's like, it was unnecessary, you know. Um, but, but that gave me a, a fright, like, what the hell, you know. And then the sure. next thing, the, the second thing lands up and it's like, oh, yeah, fuck it. What would you do with her when you, she was in your house when that happened? First one, yes. Yeah. What would you do with her? I took out, I showed them where oh, okay, I think right. he's uh, out in the, uh, did, they, uh, did they say it's cheap there or something like that? I don't yeah, know. I, just, uh, I think it's the area that they've done 85 minutes. All right, so there's uh, my front lines in. One did about a search of server, there's nothing to do with you. That's what I thought there was. The other cases, um, including you showed them where, right? And that's the thing that helps them so much. Is, yeah. Well, they showed me some photos and I'll. I did find the one lady that I'm about to take short of her. It was a long time ago, I can't remember. But, um, yeah, um, if I'm going to burn on the electric chair for one, I might as well do for two, you know. Well, you get the chance me. to get it all out, right? Yeah. And, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit back out. I think these guys want to just talk to you again. Brian, thank you for your time. And, and honestly, thanks for giving me this information. I really appreciate it. The pleasure. No, and it is for me too. I mean, honestly, like very few people treat us with respect and we sit down and try to have these conversations, and it's our job. So, and it is something I forgot. We'll follow up. I'd love to talk. I mean, no, no, no. I understand. Honestly, you're going to sit and give a chance to think, and you're going to think, and like, oh, I remember this detail now, and I remember this detail, and, and, and we'd love to continue to talk to you. <laughs> you haven't gone home yet. No, no, I'm going to go out. Your boss gonna fuck you up when you get home. What is that? Your boss gonna fuck you up when you get home. Ah, but we didn't want to. This is like cold, it's cold, but I, mean, I had a piece. It's pretty we're, good. We're, so we're it's tempting. It's only cheese, but it's and it's cold. But it's what we got? If you want some, uh, help yourself. We don't want to, we don't want to start you. Actually, I'll, 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 I'll regret this one. Good. Butterflies. I know you put some. Truth seal shit inside there. Yeah. <laughs> I know you guys. So you haven't been truthful, then it would, it would, it would change if you ate some of that? <laughs> no, you'll find it even more of like dark little things, that, but nothing bad for that. Um, anyway, um, yeah, I'm um, really sorry I wasted you guys' time because I don't, I don't mean your time now, but your time before, you know, after you found the girl that you spent all those nights researching and whatever. You know, um, uh, yeah. So if I could go back 10 years or whatever, I wish I could 
save a lot of people a lot of time and effort, but there's, there's nothing we can do about it. And you're relatively certain that this um, person out at Kluna was about a year prior to you taking a lease out there? It was a long, there, there would have been a one day in between. And would it have been a winter between? I'm sure there, there definitely would have been a winter. Mm -hmm. So you took, yes. her, you took her out there in 18. So would it have been, and you started in 15, July of 15 at Dell, and you worked there two and a half years. So to the middle of 17, you worked. Eight. Was it, near, it had to be pretty close to the end of when you worked at Dell. No. I'm just remembering now, the last year at Dell, and this is why I left Dell, the last year um, for that work season, I was in Anchorage probably two weeks out of the whole six months. Um, I was, um, again, they, they promoted me like quickly, like to more senior position. So, um, like the out of town difficult uh, inspection jobs, they were sending me out to these places. They even sent me down to Montana for like a month or two or something like that. Uh, amazing, Montana. I saw my first cowboys there, you know. That, 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 that's America, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, so, uh, so I, I was I was here for two weeks. I couldn't have done it. Um, in 2016. What have you done? We're we 19 now. So I showed her in 18 about a year ago. Yeah, so it's 19 now. 18, I was, I was almost unemployed the whole year. I was looking for work close, to, maybe close to Stephanie. Um, and that was at the, the time with Alicia. So the year before that, so that's 17. 18. So 17, I was here two weeks out of the whole year while there was no snow. So I, I left here and there was still a little bit of snow, I think, when I went down to Montana. And I remember there wasn't snow involved with this. So it was the year before. 16. Years. So it would have been maybe two years. Since, yeah. since when you took Alicia there? Yeah, yeah. From Alicia to this girl. Like that's No. I bought that gun. I only bought that gun in 2017. So you didn't even have that gun in 16, so it couldn't have been 16. Yeah. Where'd you buy that gun at again? Okay, man. This is a 22? Yeah. The, the, they had a special gun. It's a, the, 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 that's a 22. It's an STS. It's, um, it's, it's actually a, a C. It was built by another company, uh, SGS, something German, something company. and. Uh, then six, yeah, the six sold it as a mosquito or something stupid like that, and um, then six decided that they're not going to, they don't want that gun anymore. So then this company just took that exact same gun, and just put their name on and carried on. So it's it's actually a very good little treaty. It's a, it's a beautiful little thing to go plenty with. And I think you got that in twenty seventeen sometime at Cabela's. Yeah, I, 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 it's just one of the more recent guns I've got. You know. Yeah. How, how soon from the time you got the gun in 17 at Cabela's yeah. until you used it? This woman, do you think? Oh, um, months? I can't remember. I can't remember. Okay. Honestly, I can't remember. Um, I need my computer. Okay. Anyway, it, uh, Look at the mind. dates when you buy and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, the, the banking one, you go back that far. Okay, the, the, the gun was like $210 or something. Like, you bought the gun in your name, not Cabela's? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, with the, the, the ATF will get that. Yeah, so the, yeah, there's, there's a record of that. So, yeah. so yes, so find it when I bought it, and, but I can't tell you how long after this. Yeah, but I'm sure I bought that gun in the recent year. Yeah. Within two years or more, a little more. Well, um, because we're almost at the end of 19, so it's almost 20. Yeah. So the, the first gun, when I started at Dow, the first gun I bought was a, they, they were sending me to a little job to a village here in New York, and it was a road that needed to be inspected. And uh, I was told there's bears there. So, Kevin Brian goes to Cabela's and says, what's bigger than a nylon? It's a 45, it's the biggest one. So give me a 45, and I'm, I'm walking around there with a 45, and the, 
natives are laughing at me, but you know, they, 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 I think that's where the guy, one of them said, yeah, you need the word magnet in there, otherwise it's, it's gay. <laughs> so, yeah, then I, I, really, yeah, I was told a 45 is a people gun, and I'm all a people gun. You, you need a magnet for bears. So, um, yeah, anyway, so then I, the next gun I bought was a 308 rifle. Uh, everyone in Alaska wants a, well, in America wants a 30 odd six, but 308 is a pretty standard, so. American, you know, <laughs> I'll keep my heritage. <laughs> um, and then, then I bought the little 380, I think. And then I sold it, and then there was the 22 uh, Magnum, the one that was modified, sold it. And then I bought a, um, from a private, yeah, I bought a, uh, it's a beautiful break up and gun. Uh, 45 long Colt or 45 Colt and also shoots 14 rounds. Uh, very nice gun to shoot with. Um, and then I bought that, that 22. So, yeah, so that's the time scale there. Well, I think we're going to get the search warrants done on you. And then we would, if, you're, if you'd be uh, open to it, we'd like to. See if you'd be willing to take us out to Gluten and we'll put you in a car and see if you think you can find yeah. out the area or spot where it might be. You think you can do that? You willing to do that? Yeah, we're going to now. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, we think that uh, now is as good a time as any. As soon as we get done taking some photographs and the yeah. yeah. not running away. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, so, you, you guys do know that. My life is destroyed now. I'm gone. I've got absolutely no reason to want to be anywhere. You know, I, I want to help you. It's fine, but I, you know, it's over now. Everything I've ever, it's my fault. But everything it's I've ever wanted to do, like I was, I was still hoping to get my family out of South Africa, and that's what sent me out of planning school was to get my little sister out, just to get her nephew out. So. All of this is gone. I've, I've, a lot of people are going to get hurt or are hurt now. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, yeah, I understand. I, I, I don't know. You know, but uh, yeah, I've, uh, it, it, the stuff with the show is, I, I, I can't get any worse than I am. So, there's no reason to lie about it. You know? So, um, there was, there was, we were just, Talking about, and I can't believe she snitched on me because <laughs> she knows we were joking about this. Well, uh, were you though? Yeah, I, I'm more showed her a real person. Yeah, it was showed her was that really you have failed with your hand. Oh, I see, I see. Okay, so you, so you weren't, it wasn't. Oh, uh, okay, so, 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 okay, so then she, she took everything I said as real. Then, okay. so at least that, okay, yeah, she was okay. right. Yeah. Yeah, so she, she, yeah, so I can understand why she would have, because I mean, obviously, oh, she would be concerned. She's, she's not a bad person. She's, yeah, and I think she was playing the game with you, and I don't think she thought anything was real until it was, and then I think she knew the difference between yeah what was real and what wasn't, just like you said you would do. Yeah. I think the lady being just recording at 2357. Kicking Summers 19 35212. That was the interview of Brian Smith, Detective Bell, Detective Lee, and Special Agent Elliot Peterson. Is everybody good? I have about 15 minutes worth of testimony. We can break in place, or do you want to take a break, Judge? Uh, how's everybody doing? So, Detective Let's, Bell, we're good to Yeah, proceed. finish with your direct. Okay. De Detective Bell, I heard you um, discuss with Mr. Smith there driving out to a Correct. Mm -hmm. right. Is that something you all did at that point? Yes, it is. Okay. And um, tell the jury about that. How did you set that up? Where did you go? Um, what we did was we uh, used a a patrol car with a cage in it um and we i drove the vehicle borrowed it from i believe uh, officer o'connor who was at, working at the airport mm -hmm. interdiction office at the time and detective lee and uh, mr smith uh, were passengers and we drove out to a Klutna, and mr smith directed us to the pull off in the location where he believed that he had disposed of the body 
Okay. And where approximately was that? Um, it was just past the gluten power plant on the left-hand side. There was a, a guardrail and a pull-off in there, and he directed us to pull down in this area. And it is it was just as he described. It kind of pulled in, and there was a turn off to the left and indicated that he had backed up and uh, dumped the body there. Did that end up being a, a very long evening for you all? Yes, it was. And um, prior to going out there, you talked, I heard you talk with him uh, and I heard Detective Lee talk with him about executing a search warrant. Um, did you have a number of search warrants in hand? Yes, we did. Okay. And the search warrant for his person, did that include taking swabs of DNA? Yes, it did. Is that something you all did? Yes, it is. Okay. And did it also include taking photographs of Mr. Smith clothed and unclothed? Yes. Okay. I'm going to show you what I've marked for identification as states exhibits um, 46 through 51. If I may approach this. Yes. What are state's exhibits 46 through 51? Um, exhibit uh, 46 is a, a picture of uh, Mr. Smith standing fully clothed. Well, and the, let's do them all generally. Okay. Um, are those all photographs that you took that night? There are photographs that was taken that night, I believe, by Detective Lee. Okay. Do they fairly and accurately depict Mr. Smith as you saw him that night? Yes, they do. Okay. I'd move at this point for the admission and publication of 46 through 51. Is there objection? No, no. You're admitted and you may publish. Okay. The full body photograph I'm going to publish separately, but the rest will be like this. Okay, so go ahead. You were telling the jury about 46 while I get this up. In. Okay, the first uh, um, exhibit 46 is a picture of um, um, uh, Mr. Smith standing fully clothed, and then the one on the left is a picture of close up picture of his face that night. Okay, and they're behind you as well. Okay. So. And then the, if they're double-sided, so 47 should be on the back of the one you just picked. Okay. What is 47? 47 is uh, two pictures of uh, Mr. Smith's shoes. Okay. And um, did you ultimately end up taking those shoes into evidence as well? Yes, we did. We seized those. Part of the search warrant, we heard you talk about seizing clothes, if I may approach, Judge. I'm going to show you what's been marked for identification as state's exhibit 210. What is 210? These are the shoes that, and socks that we see uh, that evening pursuant to the search warrant that we executed. How do you know those are those shoes and socks? They, when we uh, seized the evidence at night, um, we bagged them with a identify the specific uh, item that was in there and then seal the bag. This this bag would have been the original bag that they were putting in, obviously taken out of this bag and put in here for things to walk. And that's how we would know that that was an APD tag. Okay. Um, I'd move at this point for the admission of 210. Mm -hmm. And then go ahead and put that exhibit 48 and tell the jury what is 48. 48 is a picture of Mr. Smith uh, unclothed, um, standing in the same place, you know, where he was with, when he was clothed. Okay, and what is 49? 49 is uh, a close-up of Mr. Smith's chest. Okay, and 50? 50 is a close-up of uh, Mr. Smith's feet. Okay, and 51? is a close-up picture of Mr. Smith's hand. And the jury was able to view the video, but at one point on the video, do you see um, Mr. Smith after actually look at his own hand? Yes, yes. Because the video was played for him and it's paused. Uh, he actually looks at his hands and puts his hand up next to the video to compare it and says, that's my hand. And I'm going to publish 49 just by passing it around. Do you mind if I continue, Judge, while that's being published? I can wait no, as well. You, you can continue if you, if you wish. Um, there are several parts on the video where Mr. Smith drew diagrams. Correct. One in particular was a diagram of um, 
of where he killed the woman in his basement. Do you recall that? Yes, I do. Okay. I'm going to show you what's been marked for identification of states exhibit 264. What is 264? It is the, the diagram that uh, Mr. Smith drew us that evening of his basement and a location of TV, couch, and where the blood specks or spots would be found on the carpet next to the couch. Okay. And is that the actual diagram that he made on that day? Yes, it is. Okay. I'd, and how do you know that? Um, it's got it's got the, the date and time stamp on it, with, as well as the APD case numbers. Okay. Is there a property and evidence tag on the back as there well? Is. Okay. I'd move at this point for the admission of, is that 269 or 4? 264. 264. No objection. Admitted. Okay. And may I publish, Judge? Yes. Okay. Publish this one. And if you could point out to the jury, he described a bar. Is that the part in the upper left hand corner? Yes. Okay. And then he drew a TV. Yes. Which is just on the end. Okay. And did he draw the couch? He did. This was the couch. Okay. And where did he indicate um, where her head was placed on the couch? He did that with this circle here. Okay. And then where did he indicate there would be blood on the floor? Between the couch and the TV on where those spots are. Okay. And we have misnumbered this as 52, but that's consistent with the actual piece of evidence that's 264? That is correct. Okay. And that's an error on my part, not the detective's judge. Disregard the 52. Um, I believe that that's all the questions I have for you. That's all the questions I have for this detective judge. All right, let's take a uh, another break. Before we do that, I want to give you a, a quick instruction. You have heard evidence through his statements to police that the defendant has on other occasions solicited women for sexual encounters. You may consider that evidence only for purposes of assessing motive and opportunity. The evidence is not admitted to show that the defendant is a person of bad character or likely to commit crimes in general. You may use the evidence only for the limited purposes stated above. To use it for any other purpose would be unfair and improper. Similar, similarly, you've also heard evidence through his statements to police of the defendant's consumption and creation of sexually explicit images or por pornography to include his admission to sexually explicit and violent fantasies. You may likewise consider that evidence only for the purpose of assessing motive and plan. That evidence is not admitted for the purpose of showing the defendant is a person of bad character or likely to commit crimes in general. You may only use this evidence for the limited purpose stated above. To use it for any other purpose would be unfair and improper. Okay, let's take a 15 minute break and stretch a little bit and we'll come back. See you everyone. We've got our jury back with us. It's uh, 1233. Everyone else is here that needs to be here in order to proceed with the Brian Smith trial. And when we just before we broke the state had finished the questioning of Detective Bell, so it's time for the defense's turn. Thank you, Judge. You may proceed. Detective Bell, um, we saw the majority of your testimony was watching the interrogation of Brian Smith you conducted. Yes. Sir. And that was a very planned out interrogation, right? There was some thought. Yeah, there was, uh, a, well, there was some coordination too, right? Sure. And you had a team in Washington, D.C. conducting a simultaneous questioning of Ms. Bisland, right? Correct. You had uh, agents going through Mr. Smith's belonging in his home, in his luggage, right? While this was going on? Correct. You had agents who were transporting investigators back and forth to APD while it was going on, right? Transporting uh, agents, we heard testimony that there was at least one Angela Worthy who yes, yes. the belongings brought them back to APD, right? Correct. And she was conducting her investigation while this was going on. Correct. So there, there was a significant amount of coordination here, and this was only part of a larger investigation, right? Correct. <clears throat> and when you decided what you were going to do here, you also came armed with search warrants. Yes. You had a number of warrants for Mr. Smith's person and his belongings, right? That's correct. His home. Correct. Personal effects. Correct. And those all took some planning themselves, 
because of the process that it takes to acquire them. Yes. To swear out an affidavit, bring it to the court, get it from a judge. Yes. And that was all done in advance of this. Yes. And then you also came armed with, I believe, an arrest warrant for Mr. Smith. Yes, I believe so. And you knew it. And there was part of the interrogation where we hear, you know, he's told basically, yep, the plan is you are going to jail right after this. Yes. And he was made aware of that later on in the interview. He was made aware of it at some time, yes. And that was also part of the planning that went into this because you have to get a search warrant, or sorry, an arrest warrant prior to showing up with an arrest warrant, right? Yes. Seems like, yeah. Yeah. Seems Definitely like a simple process. question because it is. Um, so in, in, in coming up with how this was going to occur, there are a lot of choices that have to be made, correct? Yes. Uh, for example, you had to make the choice of where you were going to interrogate Mr. Smith. Yes. And the choice that was made here was to interrogate him in the airport. Yes. In the interdiction office in the airport. Yes. And that's an office in this, to make the record and to, to clarify airport interdiction are law enforcement officers who work at the airport, right? Yes. And the interdiction room you were interrogating him in was essentially the police office in the airport. Yes. In layman's terms. Yes. <clears throat> and that was the choice you made with this interrogation. That was a choice that was made. I'm not, right. I don't believe I was involved in that decision, but right. there, there were several officers who came to these decisions, but you were part of that team, right? The, the, those decisions are probably made above my level because the choice could have been made to interrogate Mr. Smith at his home. Right. Could have made that choice. I could have made that choice. The choice could I, have been made. I, I, I get, by somebody. I'm yes. just, I, what I'm telling you is that I, I wasn't involved in making the decision of where that was going to happen. That was above my level. I was assigned to help with the interrogation and interview. But the location of an interview is a choice that has to be made in a case like this, right? It is a choice that has to be made and was made by somebody. And that choice here was to interrogate him in the airport interdiction uh, conference room, interrogation room in the airport. Obviously. Uh, not to interrogate him in his house. Right. Obviously, it was done at the airport. Not to interrogate him the next day at the jail. It, obviously, it was done at the airport. Uh, there's also a decision as to when the interrogation is going to take, take place, correct? Yes, that would be a decision that was made. And the decision was to interrogate him as he's getting off of his flight from Washington, D.C. There was a decision made to make contact with him as he got off his flight. Yes. And again, the decision could have been made differently. It could have been made to inter you know, interview him the next morning, right? I don't understand what you're asking. Well, every decision has decisions that weren't made. So you, the decision was made to interrogate him as he gets off his flight from Washington, D.C., right? Obviously. And you came armed with an arrest warrant, right? Yes. Could have just arrested him, brought him to the jail, booked him in. And then interrogated him the next day, right? Objection. I don't think he could have. Would it have been physically impossible? Would it have been legally impossible, Judge? Can we approach? Yes, you may. Objections sustained. All right. So you you chose to interrogate him that night, or sorry, that afternoon. I guess it started in the afternoon, right? In the airport. Yes. Um, you could have chose to wait. Uh, so he's arrested on an arrest warrant. Um, the normal process, if somebody's not going to be interrogated at that point, would be to bring him to the jail, book them in. And then they get a rain the next day, right? Yes. And usually at that arraignment, uh, somebody is asked if they want to hire counsel or have appointed counsel, right? That would be one of the questions they were asked, probably, yes. So after arraignment, somebody, you know, not in every case, but likely could have representation by counsel, right? That sounds like a lawyer question, but my experience is that the 
that procedure is for them to either ask for a lawyer of their own that they pay for or a court appointed attorney. And you could have waited to do your interrogation until after he had counsel, gone through his counsel saying, hey, does your client want to sit down for an interview? I'm going to object. I think we should be commenting on the right to counsel or silence. Can we approach, Judge? Yes, you may. Objections overruled. You may proceed with your questions. So you could have waited until after he'd had either retained or appointed counsel, asked the counsel, hey, can I interview your client, right? I wasn't involved in the decision of when and where he was going to be interviewed. I was assigned to late in the investigation to assist Detective Lee with the interview and interrogation. The decisions about where and when that was going to take place were not made by me. Okay. But that decision could have been made differently, right? I don't really want to speculate on the commanders and the staff, people above me on why they made those decisions to do that. So you heard at the beginning of your testimony, you're, you're now a retired detective, I right? And you were a detective for a relatively long time. How many years were you a detective? 25 years. And you handled a lot of cases during that time? Yes. Right? And you handled a lot of interrogations during that time. I did. You handled a lot of, and I think we heard, um, you know, homicide cases. You did some, uh, I think you probably did some sex assault cases. And you've done a lot of high-level cases, right? I have done a few. And you've done a lot of interrogations in those cases. Yes. And you're familiar with the process that goes into deciding where, when, and how to conduct an interrogation. Yes. Because you've done it many times yourself. Yes. In cases where you have been the lead officer. Um. The, I guess typically the decision is pretty easy. The interview is done at the police department. This was not done at the police department. Well, it was done at the police department at the airport, right? Yes. <clears throat> and when you're making that decision, again, you can decide when the interrogation takes place, right? Or somebody can. Somebody can. And that decision was either to do it when it happened or it could have been to do it later, right? Are you asking me what somebody else's, what if somebody else, some decision somebody else could have made? Could somebody have made that decision in your experience as an experienced officer of 25 years, having handled many of these sorts of cases? Somebody else could have made a decision to do it differently, apparently. Yes. <clears throat> so Mr. Smith had just gotten off of a flight from Washington, D.C. back to Anchorage, Alaska. That's what we understood. Yes. And that's what he said. And have you done that flight before? From D.C.? Yeah. Mm, probably safe to say that's likely close to an all-day flight yeah it's, yeah probably <clears throat> probably so left early in the morning all right so mr smith is getting off that flight and uh you contact him as he's it almost or he is contacted not you necessarily he is contacted almost directly after getting off that flight that's what i understand yes and his personal effects were seized from him that's correct including his electronics Yes. And he was brought directly to the room that we saw in the video where you interrogated him. Yes. <clears throat> and then you make some more decisions once you have him in the room, right? Because now you're the one in the room helping with the interrogation, right? Sure. I'm sure I would have made some decisions in the room. Yes. So the choices in the room were made by you and Detective Lee at that point, right? Yes. Working in coordination with each other. Yes. So one of the things we heard on your direct was that part of what one of your tactics is to have two officers in there. So somebody can be asking questions. Somebody can be observing. Right. Correct. And that includes one officer can be thinking about the next angle to ask questions from while the one officer is finishing their questionings. Right. Could be. Yeah. <clears throat> and one of the decisions that you have to make is right at the outset of the interview. How do you approach and talk to the subject? Right? Sure. Yeah. And to be clear, this was not a witness interview, was it? No. This was not a confidential informant interview. No. This was not the interview of a complaining witness. No. Right. This was a target interview, right? You mean he was a target? You mean you're correct? Yes. And you were interviewing him as a target? Yes. When you started your interview, you knew that he was the target of the investigation. Yes. That's why you came with the arrest warrant for him. Yes. <clears throat> so at that point, starting out the interview, uh, one of the other choices you have to make is at what point do you give him the Miranda warnings and how do you do that, right? Yes. And you start out 
pretty early on giving him the Miranda warnings. Detective Lee did, yes. And I think we see that within the first, I think it starts on maybe page three of the transcript that we had. That sounds about right. <laughs> early. <clears throat> so at that point, when you give him the Miranda warnings, uh, you have not told him why he's there. Specifically, no. You have not told him about the evidence that you have. Specifically, no. You've not told him about what the allegations are against him. No. <clears throat> you don't say, for example, hey, we're investigating you for the uh, the murder of a, uh, for the alleged murder of a sex worker. And we want to ask you questions about that. You can't leave here, though. So you give them the, you, you didn't do that, right? We all saw that and didn't do that. No. <clears throat> and that was a choice you made. You could have done that. Right? Could have told him that those specific words? Correct. I guess we could have told him you that, yes. You could have told him exactly why you were there to interrogate him. Yes. You could have told him <clears throat> the nature of the evidence against him, right? Could have. But you did not prior to giving him the Miranda warnings. No, right. You gave him the Miranda warnings. And you, you know, you've given them many times before. You gave them accurately, right? Oh, detectively. Detectively did, uh, sorry. They were they were provided accurately. Yes. <clears throat> and then you say, having the direct right mind, do you want to talk to us now? And detectively asked that, right? Detectively did. Okay. Um <clears throat> so in the first set of questions that were asked after the Miranda warnings were given were essentially biographical, right? You can refer back to the, the transcript if you need to. Dete yeah, detectively asked yes. those questions, yes. yes. The first part of that the interview. They were essentially biographical name, name address, phone address. number, things like yes. that, Correct. marital status. Yes. And then uh, you asked him his employment. Or sorry, Detective Lee did. I believe that. And I know the transcript's not always accurate here. Um, didn't notate every time that it was or wasn't. But you were Detective Lee asked him uh, about his uh, his employment status. Yes, I believe he was asked that. Uh, then instead of saying why he's there, uh, you say, why do you think you're here? Or you were detectively asked him, why do you think you're here? He was asked that, yes. And he says, well, because my truck got broken into and I reported that maybe that's why I'm here. Right? Yes. And then you asked him about that for a while. He was asked questions about that, yes. And go on for some pages asking him details about his truck being broken into. Right. Yes. <clears throat> and then again, you were detectively, according to the transcript, detectively, um, you know, on page 15 of the transcript, go into, all right, anything else you think we might be here to talk about? And you ask him again, why do you think we're here? Yeah, I believe that was detectively. <laughs> And at that point, the Miranda warnings were not repeated, right? Repeated? Correct. No. He did not repeat the Miranda warnings. Did not. Uh, he's advised that there are some things that they need to clear up, mentioned an SD card, right? Yes. And again, the Miranda warnings are not repeated at that point. No. We're now you know, several minutes away from his initial Miranda advisement, correct? Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. I have to read through the, to find out when that happened. Mm -hmm. Well, if you go back to page three to four, that's where the advisement happens. Okay. Right? And you watched the video as well as we did. Yep. You talked to him for several minutes about his biographical data, his employment status, mm -hmm. the truck issue. That took several minutes, right? Yes. <clears throat> and at that point, again, you could have chosen... To provide the Miranda warnings again. Hey, we actually found this SD card. Remember, you got the right not to talk to us. So can we talk you about talk to you about the SD card? But you chose not to do that. I would not do that. No, neither you or Detective Lee chose to do that. No. <clears throat> and we're going to get into this a little bit later. But you ask him about this SD card. Come to find out recently that in fact he had not had an SD card stolen out of his truck. Right. I don't know. I actually don't know the, the, the details on that. I know what I knew at the time. Okay. And I know that there's been some conflicting information since. But that's, I don't know the details on that. Okay. So you, you did not, you didn't keep in touch with this investigation necessarily, weren't updated on it prior to coming here? 
No. Okay. Um, so you weren't updated on any additional statements that police received from Valerie Kessler? I, I have been in the last, actually, this morning, or yesterday morning, maybe. Okay. So you're aware that she's now saying that she took a phone out of the truck? Yes. And that when he's being asked about a stolen SD card, that that SD card was an SD card that Valerie Kessler had, in fact, stolen from Fred Meyer? That's what I, well, I don't, I didn't know that. Okay. And then you start interrogating him on what you wanted to interrogate him on. So you start asking him open-ended questions about the SD card. You and Detective Lee do, sorry. Yes. And at this point, again, this is a target interview. So your goal here is to get him to confess to things, right? Um, actually, our goal was to gleam his side of uh, what happened. As we told him many times, we, would, we wanted to hear from him as to why this happened right and you wanted to get him you wanted to get him to start talking and you wanted him to talk to you i wanted him to tell us the truth yes okay. and you are trained to interrogate people and to get them to tell you things right i have had in training on interrogation yes and there are techniques that you are familiar with and that you're trained in to help people yes talk right yes um <clears throat> So one of the things, and you'd mentioned this in your direct, was develop a rapport with the subject of the interview, in this case, the target, right? Yes. Um, that includes keeping him comfortable. So he's offered water, food, snacks, drinks like that. That's correct. Uh, you're in plain clothes, not full uniform with your full belt with all your weapons on it. Similar to this, which is my work attire. Um, again, you said like the two of you, so you can kind of have a more free-flowing conversation. One of you can take over when the other uh, has sort of reached a dead end, right? Yes. Um, you also didn't tip your hand right away. You got him talking about other things before actually asking him about the SD card, right? Yes. So all the biographical data, where do you work? Why do you think you're here? That just gets him talking, gets him comfortable talking to you. Correct. And again, that tactic of getting him talking again, if we go to page uh, 35 in the transcript, you actually took a break uh, pretty early on here. We're at the bottom of page 35, you see we're gonna step out for a minute. Yes. You come back on the top of page uh, 36, back on tape. Um, and you start talking about YouTube again, right? Yes. And you get him talking about YouTube. Yes. Which again, just gets him flowing and gets him talking again. Correct. And that's your goal is to make him comfortable talking to you. Yes. And another part of that is um, you, you get small admissions up front from him, right? Like, for example, you got him admitting uh, he has cheated on his wife and you don't you you, you always very openly don't judge him for that. Right. Yes. Because if you judge him for that, if you say you did what to your who? He might he might clam up. Right. I mean, I don't know what he would have done if we did that, but that wouldn't be our our practice would be just to listen right. and understand and accept because you want to keep him talking. You want to keep him talking and make him comfortable, yes. And you got early on, he admitted to you that he had hired prostitutes, right? Yeah, yes. And you didn't, you were detectively didn't uh, jump on that and say, well, we got to arrest you for that. That sounds illegal. Right. Mm -hmm. No, you tell him that you don't care and that he can say those sorts of things to you mm -hmm. because you want him to feel comfortable saying those sorts of things to you. Yes. Because ultimately, you know, you want to try to get him to admit to things much, you know, much worse than that. And if you make him feel bad for making the small admissions, he's never going to make the bigger ones, right? Well, our, what, what I would normally say is that, um, first of all, those things that he was making admissions to are relatively minor things compared to what we were there to investigate. And also things that occur lots of times in this city and other cities. So it, it wasn't a shock of conscious um type of admission right but you again you have a choice as to how you react to that don't you yes and i it wasn't a shocking uh, admission to me and you could choose to point out that hiring prostitutes is illegal and we might need to take you to jail for that but that might make him stop talking right I, I, we could have told him that picking up a prostitute is illegal yes but you didn't do that did not do that uh, another tactic that you employed here was 
telling him that the evidence is immensely strong against him, right? We do mention that, yes. You mentioned that several times. Yes. Right? You see these phrases like, you know, there's no way out. Uh, it's hopeless. You need to address this. We have the text messages. We already know all that sort of stuff, right? So very similar statements to that. We all heard them. And you say that to make it feel like there is no way out. All you can either do is admit to it or not at this point. We say that to be honest with him at that point and let him know that there is a tremendous amount of evidence that's pointing to him. But what yeah. you don't do at that point is show him all of the evidence that you have. No. no. The first thing you do is you play him a recording on an audio device. You'd record it from the video and you just play him the audio from one of the videos, right? That's not the first thing that I recall us doing, no. With regard to the actual digital yeah. evidence that you had? I believe he was shown photograph first. He was shown photographs. Uh, of, his, of his truck in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. And That's he was played an audio from the video, right? Eventually, yes. He was played, I think, under a minute of some of the videos later on in the interrogation, right? He, he was played some of those videos. And he was shown uh, screen caps and photographs. Correct. Right? Many. But he wasn't shown all the videos, right? He wasn't shown all the videos in duration, no. Um, <clears throat> you describe them, though, frequently, right? We do both do, yes. Yeah. So you're controlling the access to the evidence that he is aware of at that point. He's aware that there's a multiple videos, multiple photographs, correct? And you're controlling his access to that. You choose what to play him and what to show him. Um, I believe we chose to, the first digital audio to show him and a video, and he didn't want to see any more of them. So you start the interrogation, and he's got all of his electronics, everything are off of him. He's just there in the clothes he was wearing, right? Yes. And you came in. In his wallet, I believe. Right. Yeah. And you came in, and at that point, your depart, you know, your team, your detective lease team, the team that was doing the interrogation, had all the evidence in your possession at that time. It seems like a truism, but you had all the evidence that you had, right? No. You did not. I, I, I would say uh, no at that stage of the investigation. We didn't have all the investigate all the evidence that we were eventually going to have not that you're going to have that. but you had the evidence you had at the time we had right? the evidence that we had yes and you chose to bring a portion of that evidence into the room yes and mr smith had no say in what evidence you did or didn't bring into the room he, he did not have any he didn't play a role in our decision making about what evidence we would bring to the interview now so in choosing what evidence to bring into the room you were controlling his access and knowledge of what evidence you actually had right No, I don't believe so. You don't think so? I don't. I believe that he has his memory of those things. And you think he can somehow read your mind as to know what is in the police department's possession right now? I believe at that point he knew what was in the police department's possession at that time. Well, you hadn't told him yet, right? I don't believe that I had to tell him. And he didn't know what searches you conducted? Um, I don't know when he knew what, where we were at doing what searches, but at some point in time he was made aware of the searches that we were doing. And he was made aware of that by you? Me and detectively, yes. And he would have to trust you and believe you at that point that you were being honest with him? Um, I don't know what he would have thought at that time, no. In order for him to have any knowledge of what you had, you would tell him what you've done and he would have to believe it, right? In order to know? He would have to believe and I'm going to object to speculation. Uh, I'm not asking him to speculate, Judge. I'm asking him to agree that one person can't read another's mind. Okay. Overrule. <clears throat> so, to back up for a second, you weren't always honest with Mr. Smith about what evidence you had. You and Detective Lee. Um, I, I don't know specifically what you're talking about. For example, you mentioned, or I, <clears throat> I actually don't want to say it's you, you were detectively mentioned a way station video, right? 
Yes, I believe Detective Lee mentioned that. You saw, you said you told him you saw his vehicle on the way station video. You know he was going down that way. That's not what I recall being said. Okay. What do you recall being said? What I recall being said was Mr. Smith being informed. Uh, at that point, we already knew he had been out there because he told us mm -hmm. he had been out there. And we knew his phone was out there. And we have a timestamp of a photo that he took while he was out there. So we knew that he had been out there. And what Mr. Smith was told what was that there are cameras inbound and outbound. Mm -hmm. I don't recall the words coming from either of us telling him that he was seen on those videos. Mm -hmm. We certainly didn't have a problem with him believing that he was seen on those videos. So if I can direct you to page 51 of the transcript. And it's attributed to Detective Lee. Um, but it says, it was your vehicle, your truck. There's cameras out on the highway at the way station, so there's no doubt about it that you were out there. No doubt about it that you were out there. You see that? Yeah. So you don't verbatim say, we have you on video, your truck. But what you do say is, there's cameras out there and there's no doubt about it, right? Yeah. And the goal we out there is to imply that we do have you on camera. We do have you on film. Well, would you like me to explain the video out there? Absolutely. So we know the time frame that Mr. Smith was out there because he told us when he was out there and the phone pinged out there and there's a timestamp on the photograph that was out there. We do know that the way station did have cameras operating at the time because we did recover the video from those cameras. And we can see all the vehicles that go by on the highway it's too dark to dis to distinguish what type of vehicle it is. You can tell the difference between a vehicle and a semi. And so we're not able to pinpoint which one of those vehicles would be Mr. Smith's vehicle. However, we do have the video from that time frame that he drove out there and came back. But you had never seen Mr. Smith's vehicle on that video. Be able to say that's Mr. Smith's vehicle. We know he was out there. You, you can't discern what type of vehicle it is only that it's going by. So any implication that we have video implying because of this video we know it was you and there's no doubt about it that wasn't true you didn't have video that showed there's no doubt about it right what also was mentioned in that is the other, other evidence that we did have mm -hmm. and you also told him you know there's an entire discussion about whether he was with a short-haired girl remember that yes and you told him that there's cameras in the marriott and we know there's no short haired girl. I didn't right? tell him that. And he was told that there's video showing that there's no short haired girl. I didn't tell him that. Was he told that? He was, I believe that he was told that by Detective Lee. I, I did have a conversation with him about the camera mm -hmm. in the hotel, though. Mm -hmm. the, I recall that conversation going where I asked him if he was a maintenance guy at the Marriott and if he was aware that there was cameras in the Marriott, inside the Marriott. And I remember Mr. Smith offering, and they show me. Mm -hmm. And then I said, what if those cameras show you mm -hmm. wheeling that cart through the hotel, out the side door and out to the parking lot? And then if you can look at the top of page 212, of the transcript. Sorry, I'm looking at somewhere else. I will redirect you later. I think the issue that we're having here is black off in the transcript. Um, I'm sorry, I will get back to that later. And then what you had also spent a lot of time discussing with him was the SD card, right? That he was missing an SD card? Yes, that was discussed a lot at length. Um, and he was initially confused about saying he was not missing an SD card. Uh, yeah, I believe that he was confused about that. And, you know, now with what we've heard from Ms. Kastler, he, in fact, that was genuine confusion. He was not, as far as we can tell, missing an SD card. Subject to speculation about genuine confusion. Overall. So, from what we now know from Ms. Kastler, unwittingly, you were saying that he had an SD card stolen out of his truck, and you were convinced he'd had one stolen out of his truck. It turns out that probably wasn't true. The information that we had at the time was that an SD card was found, yes. But it turned out at that point he was responding to a situation that really could never happen. He did not have an SD card pulled out of his truck, right? 
But we know now that uh, apparently it wasn't an SD card that was pulled out, according to Ms. Kastler, correct? Um, and then another tactic that you use is you try to come up with an excuse as to why he would have engaged in <clears throat> um, in bad behavior, right? An excuse? <clears throat> yes. I don't believe that. That's how I would characterize it. We, uh, we uh, come up with potentially themes mm -hmm. that would um, make the behavior of Mr. Smith more morally justified in his mind by presenting opportunities for him to um, or to be or somebody else be responsible for his acts, either another person or thoughts that he was having and those kind of things. It, uh, and we use that to help somebody who doesn't have to admit to some horrific event have a different motive or excuse for that behavior and and the goal here is again <clears throat> to persuade him to admit to behavior or to say something that he otherwise wouldn't say right no so we want you to admit to xyz conduct and one of the one of the things you offer is it could have been alcohol right or you were detective lisa it could have been alcohol right yeah after after all the discussions in the interviews one of the things that he seemed to blame a lot of his bad behavior on was alcohol so obviously we picked up on that and you were detectively and i think both of you, you tried the theme of a fantasy gone wrong right again from our conversations with him and what we had gleaned from miss youngblood um we knew that they had engaged in and that he had engaged in fantasies and so we offer that as a potential reason or um, an answer that would could be morally justified based on his past behavior for him to offer up. Yes. You then combine the two and you tried the uh, <clears throat> the theme of a fantasy and drinking gotten out of hand. You combine the two of them, right? We tried, as you saw, a multiple um, themes and giving Mr. Smith an opportunity to come up with a moral, moral justification for what had happened. And then you tried the theme of getting angry because of an inability, an inability to perform sexually. That maybe that's maybe you know that'll trigger him to talk about it. Again, information he offered to us that we thought we might. Uh, um, he, he told us that he had uh, um, problems with that, and we thought maybe that would be a reason for him to have done what he did. And then you also uh, <clears throat> latched onto the theme of Bradley Phillips as kind of alter ego, this other personality, right? Sure, he explained to us that uh, he had several Facebook pages, one of himself where he was the nice guy and agreed with his wife on her political views and another who was the bad boy who was a Trump supporter and racist and had bad things on and said bad things on his Facebook. So, of course, that was a theme that we also try and yes. And right, this generalized out into a theme of essentially there's the good you and the bad you, there's the smart you, and then there's Bradley Phillips. So. If Bradley Phillips did something, that doesn't really say anything about you, Brian Smith, right? I'm not sure that that we presented it that, that way, but certainly the uh, alter ego of someone he was pretending to be Bradley Phillips being responsible instead of Brian Smith could have been an opportunity for him to uh, uh, remember what he did as Bradley Phillips. And then you tried the theme of getting mad because. Uh, you know, you brought her back to the house for sex. She used you for alcohol and you never got the sex and you were angry. You effectively tried that theme, right? Brought, I don't think he brought her to the house. I'm but, sorry, I brought her to the hotel. I'm sorry. Okay. Yes. And it was essentially sex was refused. Um, you were drunk, you got rejected and that made you lash out. And you tried that theme. So many themes as we all saw it. I'm not, if, if that was one of them, this, um, you tried coming from the other side. Hey, you could admit it. People understand when accidents happen, right? Sure. Giving him an opportunity to, um, tell us that instead of this being a pre-planned, um, incident, that it was somehow a fantasy or an accident that happened and it wasn't, uh, he didn't plan to murder her. And then you tried, um, you were angry, um, because, you know, they were, uh, you know, you talked about prostitutes being dirty and they had diseases and that made you angry. 
You tried that theme on him. That was mentioned, yes. And then you tried a general, you, she just triggered you in some way. He adopted that, right? She must have triggered me in some way. He did say that. Um, and then finally, you know, uh, finally, and in the middle of all that, uh, you did ask him, you know, essentially what's preventing you? What are you scared of? What's preventing you from just letting it out? Right. That was said, yes. And that was try to get him to open up is to essentially, what do we need to tell you to make this more comfortable for you to say that you did this? No, I, I actually uh, recall and now I've watched it multiple times in the last few days, view that as us um, trying to be at, at his level, understanding of him and frank and frankly just ourselves myself i'll speak for me trying to understand what it was that could have uh, led him to do what he did and you also tried to come at it from a different side of his personality saying why don't, why don't you take control of the narrative don't let somebody else write this one for you right i do say that yes and that one got repeated many times during uh, the initial portion of the interrogation that the idea that you know, tell your own story right I, I think a lot of those things got repeated in the six or seven or eight hours. You know, don't let somebody else write it for you, right? That's a question. And, for example, saying, you know, you get to write the press statement. I think that was mentioned. That was mentioned. Recall that? I do. Um, and then you come at it a little more aggressively saying, you know, are you okay going out like that? Do you want to let somebody else tell your story? Yes. To so trying to appeal to the other side of his personality. Don't let somebody else dictate your life. We tried many things to uh, refresh his memory. And then throughout that entire time, you know, he maintained, I, I don't remember this. I, I believe what you're telling me, but I don't remember this, right? He remembered um, disposing of um, uh, this Henry's body, but he claimed not to have remembered Right. Anything other than uh, at one point in time, he mentions how drunk he was on an occasion and refers back to that night, but not as drunk as this night. So he apparently remembers being drunk that night. Right. And he continues even throughout the end of the interrogation saying he doesn't remember the night that he's alleged to have been with Kathleen Henry. That's what he says. Uh, with all of those tactics that you used, he never says, actually, you know what? I, I do believe it. I do remember what I did. Right. I think he does say, I do believe he it. Said, I'm sorry. He said, I do believe it. Yeah. He doesn't say, I remember having done that, right? He does not say that. He says, I believe you because you're showing me this evidence, right? He does say that. But he never says, I have an independent recollection of having done this. No, in fact, I believe I ask him specifically if he has an independent recollection. He says he does not. Okay. <clears throat> So and then in some of the statements you give him, you know, you just, and again, back to the idea of the overwhelming evidence that you try to use. Um, you also essentially just try to assume that it's him. You say, you know, okay, so that's definitely you. I don't believe I assumed it was him, no. Um, <clears throat> well, through all of these, Again, I don't know, you know, unclear if it's you or Detective Lee. You know, you, you dictate the evidence as if, you know, you know what happened and he just needs to admit it, right? I, I think we present the evidence that the overwhelming evidence that we have and our disbelief in that uh, he's verbally saying he doesn't remember it. And this is, and again, the jury's only saw a portion of the interrogation. It went on for, what was it, approximately eight hours? Yeah, I believe so, yeah. So you contacted him sometime between 3 and 3.30 in the airport? I think it was a little earlier than that, but I'm not sure. Okay. Right around 3, yeah. And then proceeded to go through this interrogation that we saw for, I think we watched approximately five and a half hours of it, but it was approximately eight hours long. It was longer than what we saw, yes. Um, and that was after he'd gotten off of his flight from Washington, D.C.? That was after he got off his flight, yes. And as we heard here, there, the goal of this was not necessarily to ask him a question and then let him go on his way and finish your investigation. You already came there armed with the arrest warrant. There was an arrest warrant, yes, when we started. 
And at no point during these eight hours before breaks, after breaks, anything like that, did you ever repeat his Miranda warnings to him? No, he has Miranda rights were read to him in the beginning of this in interview. And then never repeat it? No. Not by so I have to. I would ask for that instruction, Judge. Discuss it later. The appropriate time for that judge would be at the end of trial. Approach. Your request is held in abeyance, and you may proceed with your uh, redirect examination. Sure. Um, Detective Bell. If you had violated Mr. Smith's Miranda rights, would you expect that this interview would not Objection. have been played for the jury? Objection. Legal conclusion. Sustained. Um, did you read Mr. Smith his Miranda warnings? Detectively did, yes. Okay. Did that happen at the very beginning of the interview? Yes, it did. Is it required to happen at the very beginning of the interview? Yes, it is. Okay, there was some indication that maybe you should have told him what you were talking to him about first before you did that. Would that actually be legally impermissible? Objection to leading and a legal conclusion. Sustained. You can you can ask him about his training. Okay. Have you been trained extensively in the delivering of Miranda warnings? Yes. Okay. And if you had started talking to him first about all the evidence you had had, would that have been likely to elicit an incriminating response from him? Objection to speculation. Then I'd ask you to get the instruction, Judge. No instruction to give yet. Let's uh, pursue a different line of questioning. I'm, I'm sustaining the objection. Okay. Um, did you give it to him at the very beginning of the, or did Detective Lee give it to him at the very beginning of the interrogation? Yes, he did. And when he even hinted at maybe needing somebody on his side partway through, what did you do? Um, I was, I aired on the side of caution and talked to him, asked him multiple times if he was sure that he wanted to proceed and then talk with us and answer questions. And, and he indicated that he did. I was very careful to actually stop him at some point in time when he started talking and reaffirm that he wanted to talk to us. Okay. And is that commensurate with your training and experience? It is. Do you have any um, personal belief that you violated his rights in Objection. any way that night? Objection of legal conclusion, and it's irrelevant. Sustained. Did you go out of your way to not violate his legal rights Objection. that night? Objection. May we approach, Judge? No, uh, that's not... Uh, that objection is... It's a different question. That objection is overruled. Did you go out of your way to not violate his legal rights that night? Yes, I believe we did. Did you also do everything you could while not violating his legal rights to preserve evidence? Objection to the implied legal conclusion. Overruled. In addition to not violating his legal rights, were you also attempting to preserve evidence? Yes, we were. Would it have been problematic to let him go back home? Um, before talking to him or taking him into custody? Yes, it would have. Why? Um, well, because he could have destroyed evidence. We had a team at his, at his house also. We wouldn't have wanted him to, seen that, to see that. We were, uh, had planned this at multiple locations, and um, we didn't want to, frankly, we didn't want to let him out of our sight. We wanted to get him when he landed. And um, you were asked a lot of questions about showing him the nature of the evidence that you had against him. Um, did you actually show Mr. Smith quite a bit of evidence that you had against him? We, we showed him a tremendous amount of evidence that we had against him, more, more than most would see. Um, you were asked about you know, when in the interview you decided to tell him that you had images and video off the SD card. Once he knew that you had images and video, did he continue to talk for hours after that? At nauseum. Okay. Um, were you actually at the point in your interview done questioning him? 
when he came back in to tell you about the woman we know to be Veronica Abbott? We were certainly ready to go home at that point, yes. Okay. Was that um, part of the conversation initiated by you or by him? That was initiated by Mr. Smith. You were asked a lot of questions about like rationalization or themes that you might use to to keep Mr. Smith talking. Why do you use those themes, things like alcohol, fantasy gone wrong, inability to perform sexually, an alter ego, all those things? Why do you use those um, those techniques? Well, we well, we did that to again, like I said, give Mr. Smith an opportunity to provide a some type of morally more morally acceptable justification for what he had done and what we had seen in the video um for instance we wouldn't start out with uh, um this looks like a terrible monster who viciously murdered somebody and tortured somebody um so we gave him some alternatives that were less than that um is your idea in doing that to overbear his will no is it your idea to make him comfortable speaking? Yeah. Dan. What, what's your plan when you do that? Um, to make him comfortable talking with us and continuing to talk and provide, um, help him along with um, his memory and um, hopefully, you know, have him tell us what actually happened. I don't think I have any other questions for you. Thank you, Detective Bell. And you're done. Thank you. Do we have a five-minute witness like we did yesterday? I, I actually do believe we have a five-minute witness. Judge. Okay, let's let's hear the next witness. So please come up here next to me. And Judge, this is uh, David Chaffin. Good afternoon. Thank you remain standing, raise your right hand, and we'll swear you in. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that's when you'll give in case how the truth will hold your truth? I do. Thank you. Please be seated and please state your name. It's Larry Last. My name is David Chaffin, D A V I D C H A F F I N. And I, I'm sorry, I know you changed positions. Special agent? Yes. Okay, special agent Chaffin, could you introduce yourself to the jury? Sure. Um, so my name is David Chaffin. I'm a special agent with the United States Coast Guard Investigative Service. Uh, however, at the time of this case, I was a uh, sergeant with the Alaska State Troopers. And where were you stationed as in 2019, in October of 2019, at, with the troopers? Sure. I was a sergeant um, with uh, an investigative unit called the uh, Anchorage Airport Interdiction Team. Uh, and it's an investigative task force at the Anchorage International Airport. And what exactly does that team do? Um, so day to day, our primary mission was uh, drug trafficking uh, enforcement. So looking for people that are smuggling drugs. Um, to uh, communities throughout Alaska and like to Alaska um, from outside. Uh, but being based at the airport, um, we kind of touched anything that sort of passed through the airport that was um, like a major investigative in nature. Was your team at some point asked to help um, make contact with uh, the defendant, in this case, uh, Brian Smith at the airport? Okay, and can you explain to the jury what you were asked to do? Sure. So we were um, we were contacted by the Anchorage Police Department and the FBI uh, and informed that um, the defendant in this case, Mr. Smith, was going to be flying into Anchorage, Alaska, I believe, from Washington, D.C. Um, and so we were asked to assist in contacting Mr. Smith and um, and then bringing him to our office in the airport so that Anchorage police detectives could conduct an interview. And did you, in fact, uh, do that contact with Mr. Smith? Yes. Could you describe what, uh, are you all in uniform when you're doing this kind of investigation at the airport or how are you dressed? No. So our, our team blends in in the airport. So we're all dressed sort of in plain clothes like you would traveling. Most days I'd wear like a hoodie and jeans, um, but plain clothes, not looking like police. And uh, was that, were you involved directly with the contact of Mr. Smith as he got off the airplane? Yes. 
Did you take any items off of Mr. Smith upon your contact with him? Yes. So um, myself and another investor made contact with him and we took possession of his cell phone and an iPad. And then what did you do with both those items? They were provided to the Anchorage police detectives in this case. Okay. I want to talk to you. Um, did you stay at the airport during the uh, uh, conversation the detectives had with Mr. Smith there at the airport? Yes. Okay. And was you said it was in your offices, correct? Correct. Okay. One point in time, was there uh, a bathroom break that you all assisted the detectives with Mr. Smith uh, going to the bathroom? Yes. Okay. Can you describe for us that interaction you had with Mr. Smith? Sure. Um, so there was a break in the uh, interview with the detectives um, and Mr. Smith uh, asked to use the restroom, I believe. So um, myself and two other detectives walked with Mr. Smith down the hallway um, to the bathroom. Uh, he used the restroom. And then um, after he used the restroom, he started to walk out. Uh, and at that point, I suggested that he wash his hands. Um, and he responded with a comment to the effect of, um, if you knew if you knew the things I've done, uh, you wouldn't even be worried about it. Um, referring to washing his hands, um, he then washed his hands and then he made a comment to the effect of, um, "You all are going to be famous." Um, and then we returned to the uh, interview room. Was that uh, interaction with Mr. Smith recorded? Yes. And have you listened to a recording of that interaction? Yes. Is that a fair and accurate representation of what you recall occurring on that day? Yes. At this time, Judge, I would like to move to admit Exhibit uh, 259, which is an uh, that audio particular audio recording. It is one minute and 49 seconds. Any objection? No objection. It's admitted and you may play it. Thank you. Those are all the questions I have, Judge, for Special Agent Chauvin. Special Agent Chaffin. So that conversation occurred after uh, several hours of Mr. Smith's interrogation, right? I believe so, yes. And did you listen to that interrogation? Uh, did I listen to the interrogation? As it was happening, not since then, but while it was oh, happening. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I was in the room next door. I, I, I was listening to it yeah, off and on the whole time. So you know that during that interrogation, uh, the interrogating officers made it clear that Mr. Smith was going to be arrested and brought to jail for allegations of murder, right? I I don't recall when that happened. I I, I don't have a reason to doubt that. Yeah. But it was pretty clear during that first large chunk of the interrogation that that was the allegation against him. Yes, yes. So they have Absolutely. videos of him doing it. Yes. Right now. And it was clear that he was not going to leave that room under his own power without being arrested, right? That was my understanding. <clears throat> right, thank you. I have no additional questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's take our break for the day. See you tomorrow morning at 8 30. We're still on the record. I'm going to talk with the attorneys. Be seated, please. I do think that there, the jury is likely to be confused a bit about their role following some of the questioning we just had. And uh, I'm, I've drafted up some language that you can think about. I, I would give this first thing in the morning when we, after we've talked about it.
but here's what I suggest. You heard some questions and testimony about whether Mr. Smith's constitutional rights were violated during his police interview. Whether or not his constitutional rights have been violated is a de determination that is made by the court, not the jury. You must not speculate about whether or not Mr. Smith's right, rights have been violated during your deliberations. Unless noted otherwise, all evidence presented to you in this case has been ruled to be admissible. I'm fine with that, Judge. I'm not fine with that. I, you, as a matter of law, ruled that his Fifth and Sixth Amendment rights were not violated. And I think to imply otherwise, um, especially when we have redactions at the defense request out of the interview, Im implies otherwise. I think you need to tell them that the officer, frankly, did. I don't think you have to comment as far as like the officer did everything appropriate, but when you sustained four objections in a row after telling me that you would give an instruction, um, it made it look as though his rights were violated. And I think you can say clearly in this case, as a matter of law, they were not. If they had been, the evidence wouldn't have been admitted. And so I, th I think the instruction needs to say, as a matter of law, neither his Fifth or Sixth Amendment rights were violated by the detectives in this case. The manner of the interrogation, I mean, it's up to the jury to decide whether they believe Mr. Smith was telling the truth or not in that interrogation. But I think you need to tell them that as a matter of right, that it's a matter to of Do you any law. of the language I read? Um, did you find any of it erroneous or objectionable? The, the first part. Can, can you? I'll I didn't get it. You heard some questions and testimony about whether Mr. Smith's constitutional rights were violated during his, his police interview. Whether or not his constitutional rights have been violated is a determination that is made by the court, not the jury. You must not speculate about whether or not Mr. Smith right, Smith's rights have been violated during your deliberations. Unless noted otherwise, all evidence presented to you in this case has been ruled to be admissible. Judge, I think that accomplishes what the prosecution is seeking. I think it directly accomplishes it. I don't have any objection with that. The, Do you want some time to think about whether you have any objections to that language? Yeah, I just like overnight. I, I I didn't catch the less noted otherwise. Part. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, so I think rather than me arguably directly commenting on the evidence, uh, I chose the language that that I've I've proposed, but. Uh, you can think about it overnight and we'll take it up first thing in the morning. Thank you. Okay. Can I have a photocopy of what you've drafted? I still even the third time only wrote down. We'll uh, tell you what, we'll type it up and we'll get it by email to okay. the parties shortly. Thank you. Okay, well, Frederick.